Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bottle Cap Brigade, the best D&D campaign you will ever encounter. Uh, we're the live stream that gets drunk, talks about D&D, but doesn't really play it right. That's right, the rules to us are like Instagram posts of your wheatgrass breakfast shake. No one cares. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was good. It was good. Yeah. I wrote it on the way home. Shots was, fired. Shots fired. <laughs> Wait, oh, oh, it's because Austin, do you drink? Do you drink your wheatgrass? Is that what this is? Every morning. I'm sorry. That's what it is. Um, I still yeah. don't care. Yeah. It's, do it. More power to you. Just don't post it. No one. No one sees shit. You're all joining us uh, for part two of a very special uh, streamathon that uh, that we're doing called the Zenith of Frost Feather. Um, this is something super special that uh, is a homebrew um, three part episodic that our, our dear Austin Townend, uh, usual dungeon daddy, um, put together. <laughs> and uh, the special part is we're doing these three different parts, but we're mixing everything up. So tonight, I will be your Dungeness Crab Master for episode two. And if you tuned in yesterday, you'll notice that the characters that we created are now being played uh, by new folks. Uh, so it's gonna get weird. Uh, but without further ado, let's Just introduce- Just you wait and see. Yeah. Let's introduce all these super amazing people that uh, will be playing tonight. Uh, first, some singing voices shatter glass. Others put them back together. It's Taylor Hawker playing <laughs> Madden tonight. <laughs> Woo! Look at that guy. Hydrate. Already. Yay! Thank you for wow. hydration. Cheers. Thanks, Fantasy Animal We're Vegan. We started early. Yeah. <laughs> um, your next brigadier tonight. Now, here's the thing. One thing that really sucks about owning a truck is that all of your friends will ask you to move. But this person went out and bought a truck so that they could do more for their friends. It's Austin Townend playing Francis. <laughs> That's not true, but I huh? would do that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Our first uh, guest performer tonight. Uh, some are guilty by association. This person's the coolest person ever because they're married to Miranda. Uh, this is Andrew Hakila Palacio as Jarvis. And then, that. <laughs> I'm so excited for tonight. That wasn't this is, him this is like character. a fun part. No, that's not <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> now, now you can play your character. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. This is the fun part of like swapping characters is now you get to see your character played by everybody else. It's um, our next guest performer tonight donates his time to the zoo to comfort newborn baby seals. It's Matthew Melton as the nameless sentient stone. Boo. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me, gang. I, <laughs> none of that is true, but very kind of <laughs> He's the type of person that would do that. That's what he matters. Would. He would. <laughs> your, your next special guest, uh, now, Here's the thing. Many of us have heard the phrase, wow, this person has the body of a Greek god. But Greek gods are like, wow, that person has the face of Chad Showhead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> as Boca Verde. What up? <laughs> <laughs> and the only person uh, who will be introducing their character for the first time, because we're going to add them in uh, to the campaign here. Uh, so in the movie Troy, um, Brad Pitt was looking at the script like, listen, I love this. This is great, but I really need hair like Joe Fritz. <laughs> That's true, actually. Barely ever wash it, too, just like people did back then. I'm just going to get <laughs> dirty again. Why should you? <laughs> Joe, can you please uh, describe your character? Um, my character is named Dragush. He is a race I've never played before. He's a Vidalcan. They're partially amphibious and they're blue. They kind of look like they're part of the blue man group. Um, I am an artificer. I am 381 years old. Oh, young boy. Yeah. Mm. Young boy, old balls. 
they I, say. <laughs> that's, the, that's the dream. That's, that's the dream. The dream. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of a screw up. Jar Jar Binks ask. <laughs> oh, this is going to be perfect. Oh, no. <laughs> this uh, is so, but so not perfect. Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> um, no, he's just old, kind of, kind of a perpetual failure, wandering around <laughs> doing life. Um, what's great is a lot of this information I'm hearing for the first time as this episode's dungeon master, and it just it makes the content so much better. So I hope. Hope everybody enjoys uh, what's about to happen. Um, but uh, now that we have the introductions out of the way, Austin, you never get to talk about yeah. things. And so <laughs> I wanted to give you this opportunity to talk about things. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, this would be my very first time doing the marketing piece for the Bottle Cap Brigade. I don't want you guys to be overly excited. I'm kind of excited, uh, but like it's, it's, I don't know if it's showing or not, but. Um, <laughs> It's going to be something. So hope you guys are ready. Brace yourself. Uh, grab a drink. Take a seat. <laughs> and here we go. Dashing through the snow. One action out of the way. <laughs> Over the shields we go. Lock picking all the way. Uh -huh. Spells that we're <laughs> casting. Magic missile and lightning. What fun it is to buy something from Dice Envy tonight. Oh, jingle spells, jingle spells, mingle while we play. Oh, what fun it is to buy dice from Dice Envy. Oh, jingle spells, jingle spells. Nat ones are not okay. www.dicenvy.com. -E Cheers, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Right on. <laughs> I had to uh, good. remember how that song went. Uh, surprisingly, did not recall it until <laughs> four hours ago. So none of us could tell. You totally. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, kill it. Oh, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. That's so fun. <laughs> it's almost like you sing it too much. I'm gonna go for a walk. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Without Who further he, ado, nice. let's jump into episode two of Zenith of Frostfeather and score ourselves some frost feathers. This is episode two. <laughs> <laughs> I love that flavor. It's so good. Um, so, the snow is falling very thick on Mount Wester. Uh, we met three trappers on Mount Wester that uh, are, are out hunting owlkin skins and are 90% uh, 98% of the way through and about to return uh, back to Kalak with their findings to sell them and make a whole bunch of money for the winter. We also met a human swamp druid that is out alone in the wilderness trying to avoid taxation without his representation and stop the 5G wizards from controlling his freedoms. Now these two parties, uh, along with a, a nameless sentient stone, joined up and uh, through some, some random avalanche activity, found themselves outside of a cabin. Unfortunately, after some punches were thrown because somebody got swamp assed in the face, Jarvis ran off because he didn't need that shit. And now we find ourselves, uh, three of our party members are uh, in the basement of said cabin after finding a magical key that opened a trap door and discovering a map with some very peculiar markings on it, uh, showing different locations around uh, the continent of Magna. Um, Jarvis ran off and found a ladder going into the ground and absolutely sure that he had stumbled upon the lair of the 5G wizards before venturing down that la ladder, felt it best that he communed with nature and uh, regained some of his stamina and power, um, knowing that he would be facing off with these wizards. After leaving uh, out the front door of the cabin to get a little bit of air after getting turned down from a, from a hug, um, Madden, 
is outside the door of the cabin. And uh, she looks off uh, in the distance and sees a, a puff of snow uh, puff up and, and feels like she should probably go investigate this. Um, Madden is walking through the snow and she comes up on a, uh, a, a little um, kind of molded earth hut um, that uh, serves as some, uh, some uh, refuse from the storm um, that is uh, you know, coming down on the side of the mountain. And uh, seeing this, she has to decide what to do. Uh, she, does she know that it's a, uh, uh, can I look to see if there's somebody Actually, I'm sorry, I messed, the... I messed this whole thing up. I messed this whole thing up. Boca Verde, that's the person, <laughs> not Matt. Madden's downstairs. Madden's downstairs yeah. in the basement. Boca Verde, you're the person that left. <laughs> I got the Wait, two I'll, names mixed up. Do you want to start over? Please Chad's start like, over. I wasn't paying attention to any of that. Uh -oh, what am I doing? Hey, uh, <laughs> Boca, here's what happened. I Boca was, uh, Verde got turned down for the hug. It was a long night last night. If you guys tuned in to this shift. Um, it was crazy. Boca Verde, you got turned down by a hug. Like you tried to hug, um, you tried to hug Francis. And it was a major like cultural thing for you to get turned down by this, uh, by Francis offering this hug. You went outside of the cabin to kind of catch, catch your feelings and some air. You look off in the distance, see this puff of snow and you're like, something's up with that. You went to investigate, you find this shelter. What do you do? And, and, and is this shelter, is this shelter, is is this the cabin that, uh, uh, or have, has Boca been no. a part of the cabin? No? Uh, well, you, I mean, you were inside the cabin earlier, uh, but right, you, that's left, shut down. you left the cabin and you're, you're, you were following this puff of snow that you saw poof up. Um, mm -hmm. and, and after walking away from the cabin, you stumble upon uh, this, the, this seemingly makeshift shelter um, that is kind of uh, in, in the forest away from the cabin. Um, who, who else is in the cabin other than Francis, who I don't care about? <laughs> so, um, so you're by yourself in the cabin. We have uh, Madden, Francis, uh, and the nameless sentient stone. So they are not with you. Um, you're, okay. yeah, you're just kind of alone and you stumble upon this uh, separate shelter. Um, uh, how, how far have I traveled from the cabin? Um, I mean, yeah, it was, it's long enough, it's far enough that you could see, um, like a, a little puff. Um, I would say it's maybe a, a quarter of a mile. Okay. Um, well, um, I don't need them. I don't need anyone. I'm going to see what this thing is. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, Jar Jarvis, can you please... <laughs> Can you please roll a perception check for me? Sure can. <laughs> oh, well, if you look at that, it'd be a 16. And then with my modifier up in there, just gonna have to add this up real quick. Math really ain't my thing, but uh, perception. You know, playing new characters is hard. And uh, I'm just gonna say it's a 16 plus, uh, I think it's like four. Uh, four. Yep. So there's a twenty right there. <laughs> All right. So uh, so you hear outside of your little shelter um, that, that you had been meditating, uh, trying to regain some of your stamina uh, before you head down this ladder. Uh, you hear this voice that is that is vaguely familiar um, from like an hour ago. Um, Snake skin. Oh, oh no! There's a female voice. Yeah. It's it, it's it's uh, it was Boca Verde's voice but you don't know you talking yet. to me i uh um, he gets up and starts looking around uh in his little cave obviously since uh, meditation disrupted might as well go out and see what's out there sweet so you poke your head out the front door and you are now face to face with voca verde um and voca punched you twice in the face uh, last uh, about about an hour ago, um, uh, motivating oh. you to ditch everything because you don't need that. You don't know these people, uh, and now you're face to face with this person that punched you. What are you doing here? <laughs> I, I should I should ask the same of you. What are you doing here? I'm meditating. I got every right to be here. Oh, well, 
coming in? You coming in? What do you? What do you want? You trying to come take my gun? My <laughs> trying to come take bows and arrows away from me? My weapons? I don't, I don't care about your bows and your arrows. <laughs> well, what do you got to say? What, what do you got to say for yourself? Punch I'm me in the face. You're lucky oh, I, I don't exact revenge on you. <laughs> oh, you're. Yeah, I hit you again. Yeah, well, you hit like a, a avocado huh? monk. You hit like a. Ooh. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And I do it again. Well, you better watch yourself, because, uh. Like you're the one who needs watching yourself. I transform an alligator, bite your arm right off. I'd like to see that. I'll show you. Hey, why are you here? What do you want? What are you doing out here, anyway? Uh, I just. <clears throat> I don't need any of those other hunters. And I'm just doing it my way. That's always good to do. You're way better off alone. Everybody's free to do it. Whatever. If they want. All right. All right. Just wait, 15 minutes, okay? Are we there yet? We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> All right. Well, I kind of respect that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. And, and uh -huh. you know, as far as getting, getting the good old, you know, slobber knocker in face, not first time that's happened to me. So. Uh, well, I can say that I've punched many of people, and many of them punch back, but. You seem all right, so. Why don't you come yeah. on in here from the cold? I think I got a spell that'll light a fire or something. I, I, I can come in? Yeah, yeah, you can cross the threshold. But you ain't a vampire, are you, secretly? Oh. oh. <laughs> you, if you're a vampire, you have to tell me you are. You know that, right? That's a law. I don't know if that's a thing. All right, well, come on in. Come on. Thank you. I'll come in. I, uh, obviously, I've been meditating a long time, so I will cast Create Bonfire as a cantrip and warm us up. Excellent. You do that. It's very comfortable. Uh, Voka, you notice in the corner of uh, Jarvis's uh, makeshift shelter that there is a ladder um, coming up out of the ground. There's a, there's a little bit of a hole there with kind of a wooden covering. Um, a little bit of a trap door that you might find in the wilderness uh, on that ladder. You also notice uh, kind of a molted snake skin that's just hanging there. Ooh. Where'd that come from? Where what? Around here. Snake skin? Mm -hmm. probably, probably from his mother's womb. We don't need to talk about that, all right? Yeah. Make, make yourself okay. comfortable. Would you like a uh, you like yourself some uh, fire fire water or any any such embodiment? Um, <laughs> yeah, take some fire water. Great. Well, it ain't real fire water. I'll tell you what. I, I had to I had to go ahead and <clears throat> had to brew this myself. Goes gives the fire water. Sits down real real nice and quick there. What's not What's not real? Well, well the fire water is real. It's just not. Um, it's maybe not your your, your your normal government procured fire water with uh, all them contaminants and uh, other such uh, sediments that are might possibly being in there. Mm. Uh, now, well, I can I uh, offer you one of, uh, I reach into my cloak, one of my avocados? Oh, man. Uh, Put it on toast? I, see, here's the thing. I really like avocado, but when I eat it, it makes my lips sting and whatnot. And I kind of, it's not like a full blown allergy, but uh, I appreciate the offer. Now, now look, I, there's something I got to tell you. I, I found, I found the den. I found the den of the 5G whispers. I found it. There's a, it's an actual den, huh? Well, I didn't that, go. That was a conspiracy, but, but okay. You see? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I love to be the one to say that I told you so. Volca Verde, can you please roll an insight check for me? Uh, it's going to be an, uh, a dirty 20. A dirty hey. 20. Okay. Um, so as Jarvis is, is talking about this, uh, you, you fully believe that uh, he found a den. You can literally see... Uh, the ladder and the trap door right there. Um, but uh, you have full confidence that it has nothing to do with 5G wizards and Jarvis, uh, th that it's completely unfounded, total conspiracy, um, and in his head. Hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, well. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, is your is your 
Is your brain already getting scrambled up or something? I, I'm, I'm telling uh, you, there's a den of villainy, right? They're all, they're all tucked in there like three coyotes in a in a glacier, you know? So there's three, are there coyotes in there? Or well, I there? don't know. I don't quite know. I don't think there's coyotes. It's possible. I'm not going to okay, okay. turn yeah, it down yeah. or deny possibilities like you seem to do, but. Okay. i just walk uh, over to the trap door and see if there's any sort of extra reaction from Jarvis. Uh, I, I honestly, I think you, you could take a peek if you like. Uh, I think, did I already check it for traps last session? I, I guess I didn't really. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, be careful. It might be trapped. That, um, tra okay. that trap door. I'll check name. the traps. <laughs> uh, for, first, what I'd like you to do, Boca Verde, um, I would like you to roll a perception check. Jarvis, I want you to roll a perception check with disadvantage. <laughs> yo, yo, yoink. Ooh, still pretty good. I got a 19. I got four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> this is great. Um, uh, Voka, I'm going to need you to roll another insight check that I'll use here in a second. Um, but don't tell me what it is right now. So uh, Jarvis, as, as Voka goes over to the trap door, uh, you, you faintly hear um, uh, some murmurings coming from underneath the trap door. You can't in any way make out what they are, uh, but, but it's, uh, there are, there are some, some murmurings that, that seem to be coming from some kind of uh, humanoid uh, creature. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, well, hold, hold, hold your basilisks right there, young avocado uh, f fighter of, of sorts. Well, yeah, I'm about to tell them you overused piece of snake flesh already. All right, now listen. <laughs> I can hear them murmuring something down there, casting spells, trying to control our minds and our, you know, it's the government, I tell you. It's the, it's, but, but what we need to do is return here to this, uh, this little infested pit with the rest of the group. Now, I know that, I know that they they don't quite like me because they're a bunch of hypocrites that get dirty themselves too. And you're kind of, you know. What do you, what do you want from me? I live out here all in the midst of nowhere. I don't even have I no. I think you've got you. You're onto a good idea. I like what you're on to. Thank you, Voka. What was your insight check? Nine. A nine. Okay. Um. Yeah. So. As as you hear this, um, you don't you don't believe anything he says. You don't you don't believe that um, that uh, he you you believe that he might have heard something, but his assessment of what this something is makes no sense to you. You're you are firmly uh, believing that that he's just a conspiracy theorist, uh, as you know, brainwashed by himself. Mm. Well, um, why don't I, um, why don't you stay here and, uh, I'll go get the others. Guard and, the uh, trap. You, you guard, yeah, you guard the trap, because I'm, I'm not going to be able to guard it by myself, but you can. And, um, and the I, others, except for that asshole Francis. Uh, I sneeze. For the the others are, uh, I'll, I'll, they listen to me. Yeah. All right, well, the, uh, you know, I, I, I do uh, honestly believe that that's a good, a great choice since I know the most about the the Gorazin Cabal. And, um, you know, it's a, that's a great idea. I'll just wait back here. I need to finish up meditating myself and, and, uh, and if you need to quit snack. interrupting, you goddamn, you, you darned, you varmint. <laughs> uh, excuse okay, yeah. me, that, that tube of, that tube of snake flesh just won't shut up. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Bring them on back. Bring them on back here. Animal. Tell them, I, okay. tell them that I forgive them for yeah, calling me yeah. dirty. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll see. I'll uh, I'll be back. Yeah. All right. Then. All right. So Voka, you leave the shelter to head back to the cabin. Yes. Cool. All right. So um, still inside the shelter, um, Jarvis, you hear. Uh, I. I, I really don't like the way that you were speaking to me in front of that very nice green avocado fruit. Oh, first of all, very nice green. <laughs> Let's not mince words here. You don't like her either. Second of all, get over it. Grow some thicker skin. Or I guess that's how you became, but you, never mind. That's don't... not funny. That is not, you know better. I, 
Yeah, you know, I'm not like, trying to be insensitive. I just feel like we, you know, it's, I, 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 it, why should I have to change my jokes just for you? You know, I, I just just relax. All right. You know what? You know what? I should, uh, I should, I should, I should just let you. I should just let you climb down this ladder and face off against the five G wizards all by yourself. You can go ahead and get yourself killed. It'll be fine. All right. Listen, listen, listen. You know. If there's one thing the 5G wizards would want by controlling our brains, it would be that they would want us to be turning against each other and whatnot. So maybe, maybe we just, uh, you know, I'll, maybe the, if I said that I felt maybe a little bit, just a tiny, weensy, teensy bit sorry about how I spoke with you. And then we get back to, we, we don't need to be at each other's throats, you know, like a bunch of varmints in a, a, a knuckleberry sack when we could just, uh, you know, ally our forces and kind of swallow our prides and scurry on down that that 5g wizard hole oh i i i accept your apology um let's uh let's get after it all right then all right so uh jarvis you're you head down the or, or you move to head down the trap door oh no no i'm gonna i'm gonna stick near the trap door um okay. And and still wait. I think. Uh, am I fully meditated right now? Do or do I need to? Yeah, meditate yeah. You've. Uh, I mean, you're you're pretty you're pretty well rested up. You know, you have uh, you feel as good as you can feel. Full health. You know, you got all your spells. You're good to go. Sure. All right. Well, hey, guess what? Uh, little little snake skin, my friend. No, little what? Uh, uh, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. And if we're if we're all allied up, maybe I do just take a little. You know, we take a little peek down there and make sure that. You know, them 5G wizards are staying put so we can show them what fur. Yeah, yeah, don't tread on me. <laughs> exactly. That's right. So, All right. And I, so, so I do, I do, I'm going to take a little peek. I do want to take a right. little peek, open it up. So, uh, so Jarvis, you, um, you start to open uh, the little trap door and you look down there and, and it's, it's very, very dark. Um, you know, it, it's difficult to see anything with that little amount of light that you're letting in, uh, you know, from the bonfire. Do I hear, does it sound like the wizard's voices get louder as I open it? Uh, roll a perception check for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be 18 plus fur, 22. Yeah. Um, so they do get louder as you open it, um, but uh, just because your your ears are so keenly, um, you know, they're, they're so keen from, from being out in the wilderness for so long and you're training up your senses, that uh, you can actually tell that as you open it, uh, the the murmured voices are actually coming from very very deep uh, in uh, in wherever this tunnel is is leading. I hear an echo. Um, yeah, yeah. One second. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. My voice. The voices in my head sometimes they just you know. Oh, I I totally understand. I totally understand those voices. Uh, I uh, immediately, uh, sorry, I, I missed a little bit what you're saying, but as soon as I hear the voices, I actually let the the, the shut the, the trap door shut down, and I, cool. and I cover my ears real quick, and I say, "Ooh, <laughs> so, not gonna so, brainwash me. Gonna wait. We'll send as, one of the other ones down first. As as you cover your ears um, and, and and give it a moment to kind of process what you heard, uh, you realize in that moment that um, these voices were coming from very deep. Uh, down into uh, wherever this trap door was leading. So uh, you could assess that if you were to head down the ladder, you would not immediately meet anything that you have heard yet. Well, this is just a coin toss, isn't it? Snake skin. Maybe we should send one of the other ones down there first, see if they get affected by them 5G brain waves, you know, start spewing, start spewing some government nonsense at the rest of us to pay our taxes and, you know, <laughs> To, to believe in the local water well companies and whatnot. Uh, but as, uh, as you say this, um, you know, over in the corner, there are, there are, uh, there's a twig that has three leaves on it uh, that says, you're not going to sacrifice me again, are you? I'm yeah. not your scout. Well, maybe you start showing yourself, start showing a little bit more of a, you know, show some more motivation, you know, act more like a tree than twig. Perhaps. Yes, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got a you got a lot of bark but no bite. <laughs> this is not funny. <laughs> if if you, if you do 
don't shut this up, I'm going to leave. Oh, don't get yourself snapped. Uh, no, I'm not going to sacrifice you again. You make a good walking stick. So you're fine. Don't worry about it. Hey. But if you don't like it, you can make like yourself and leave. <laughs> I just, I just, Ugh. I just said that, and and, and the the snake skin is like, ha, 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 great joke, Jarvis. Uh, well, you know, sometimes I get that interference in my head with other voices and whatnot. Hydrate. <laughs> cool. We also missed one, so, so drink twice. Okay. Sure. So, uh, Jarvis, you're having this conversation. Um, with the two, uh, with the with the snakeskin and the the stick in the corner, um, mm. what have you decided to do about what's happening? All right, do you guys want to wait here? Or do you want to go down? Snakeskin first. Let, what do you want? Let's do this. Oh, <laughs> Show, showing a little bit of initiative there. All right, Twig. Well, <laughs> oh, well, I feel I feel like if if I don't do it, you're just going to make fun of me again. So well. Fine. Oh, wow. All right. Um, all right. Twig, you're going first. I uh, I go and I what? open the uh, <laughs> I open the I open the trap door and I throw Tig Twig on down. And then I uh, I go ahead and I grab the snake skin. I throw it over my shoulder. And right before we're about to go down, I look over down to and I say, you know, truly, I'm sorry about the way I was talking to you. I uh, forgot that Twig was around. He's a lot easier to make fun of. So let's go ahead and get down here. <laughs> Uh, you guys, you guys start to climb down the ladder, and now we're going to switch perspectives. Um, so we are now cutting to the the basement, uh, where we have Madden, uh, Francis, as well as the nameless sentient stone. Uh, you guys have just discovered a map that is on the floor of this cabin basement. Um, and you see on the map that there are some X's uh, with flames around these X's at various points um, uh, of the entire continent of Magna. So it's, it's a map of the whole place. Um, it, it's very peculiar. You also notice off in the corner that there is, there's another door, uh, to, uh, to your left. <laughs> it's to your left. Um, that is, it's slightly ajar with some light coming through. Um, and, and you notice, uh, uh, at the bottom of the door, there are, there are two shadowy, um, somethings at the bottom of the door. Uh, and yeah, that's what you see in the room right now. What do you guys think the, the uh, so we've just came down to the bottom and we, in the, is the map on, like, it's a big map on the floor or it's just a normal map that is just laying on the floor. It's, like, it's a, it's a big okay, old map cool. that's on the floor. Um, uh, I want to, when Madden notices the, the map, she, or when she notices the door, um, she's gonna kind of put her hand on Francis uh, as like a like like a mom seatbelt, and then whisper, "Be very quiet. There's a door, and there's pe there looks like there's somebody behind that door." And then she's slowly gonna step towards the door to peek around it to see what she sees on the other are side. You, are you oh. sure, Madden, if you should do that? It should be quiet now. And then she's gonna peer around the door. Um, cool. So as as you open the door a little bit more to to peer into it, uh, please roll a stealth roll. Okay. Oh, that's fun. Because I think I can use dexterity instead. It's fun. And does it help? Who knows? I don't. Uh, I rolled a. An eight. An eight. Cool. Um, so, so you open the door and it makes a creak. And um, what? Uh, so, so this this creak. You. What you hear from the other side because you haven't opened it uh, enough to actually see what's going on. Um, you oh. hear you hear some kind of like murmuring, um, and and that murmuring stops. Uh, I think she's going to reach back and I think that is a fair assessment. And then I think she's going to just have her hands on her pike, just ready, like readying if we get attacked by something. 
I think I feel like we should continue to open the door. What do you? I just have one question. Um, also, is the rock here? The stone? Yes, the okay. the rock is there. Um, I believe. The, is it in my pocket? I think so. I think yeah, the rock ask. is in Madden's pocket. Okay. Okay. But it can, uh, uh, you know, the nameless sentient stone does speak telepathically, so you 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 can still speak from the pocket. Okay, okay. So when we say the rock, we mean the stone, which is me. I'm in a pocket. <laughs> which is you. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Specificity is the soul of narrative. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whose pocket am I in? Madden's. Madden's. Mine. Okay. And how how long have I been in this pocket? Like, do I know where we are? Yeah, I mean, you have you have kind of a, a surreal sense of your surroundings because um, you're a rock, and so um, <clears throat> stone. Yeah, stone. You're a stone. <laughs> um, so so yeah, you 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 know that you have gone down the trap door from from the cabin. Uh, you've maybe uh, you've maybe been in the in her pocket for ten minutes. Okay. In fact, um, can you uh, can you roll a perception check for me? I can't. Nameless sentient stone. It's gonna be not great. Let me look at my character sheet right quick. That is a four plus three for a seven. Ooh. Cool. Ooh. Um, so this whole time you have been just enraptured by the warmth that is Madden's pocket. And you haven't really been paying attention to uh, to anything that's happened with the door or with the murmuring. Okay. Uh, and so and we're so all Madden, standing you, uh, out. Okay. I've got, yeah, the hand on the pike, the hand on the door. Um, Francis, should should we peek in or just go for it? Madam, we could, we could just, we could just leave too. We could, we could just leave. We don't have to do this. Uh, she puts her hand down from the pike. And then um, I, I feel like that's when she would want to bend over and pick up that map and just like say. But there's a reason that this trap door is down here and I feel like we should find out why. You rolled up that really big map really quickly. That was really it, impressive. It's right about this time that, uh, that you guys hear from the other side of the door it's like, no, I swear I heard something. Timnith, go check it out. I don't like the sound of that, Madden. I don't want, I don't want, I don't like anything about it. Don't worry, I'll protect you. And then she wants to draw the pike and then stand uh, on the other side of the door ready and attack. Cool. Um, it's, it's, uh, so uh, Tim, uh, uh, you guys don't hear anything. Um, you can, uh, other than some footsteps, um, on the other side of the door, um, and and they approach the door, they get louder, and then they they stop right in front of the door. Um, and I need all of you guys to roll a stealth check. Ooh. Um, the nameless sentient stone, you have advantage. <laughs> That's good. Dope. We're hidden in the pocket. <laughs> How do I don't touch the ground and make a noise? What a scenario. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got a four. <laughs> Uh, cheers, everybody! Holy uh, shit. First now, first now, one of the evening. Uh, drink, cheers. <laughs> my seat, my wow. Uh, and that's an eighteen for <laughs> the nameless sentient stone. Cool. The only okay. one who matters. So, <laughs> so nameless oh, sentient stone, uh, you are so quiet. Everything's great. <laughs> Um, I, I don't think I'm Francis. trying to be quiet. I might be asleep, TBH. <laughs> you won't be asleep for long uh, because Francis and Madden, both of you fart. Um, oh. And Madden, you're a little you're a little bit concerned that just something came out with it. <laughs> Damn it. Um, but just because of the, t the, the, the how, <gasps> how tense the situation is, um, yeah, both of you let out a little poop. Um, oh. And... <laughs> And you hear from the from the other side of the door. I heard four. Um, and I, I just want to yell back. No, you didn't. <laughs> now, why did you? Speak? Um, 
<laughs> do we do we know what like obviously we understood it so i i assume they're speaking in common do yes. what do they sound like because that doesn't sound like a hu like a like a human person oh yeah good call so um yeah well, well would i know that i don't know if I. that is that. that is exactly what you hear right now um but uh you know you can't you can't really tell um but you're about to so what happens is um the the door gets kicked open and you notice that that this orc comes out um that is wearing a black a black robe hood up over uh his head um and there there are runic you know symbols uh, down the sides of the robe um and and he it's tied off with a belt um uh, at the center of the belt you see this uh this kind of uh like demonic emblem um that has uh just a demonic symbol with like two little horns on the side because it's a demon um and uh then this uh this orc comes in and says what are you doing here uh shit uh, I think Madden? Uh, Madden just looks and says, "What are you doing here?" Yeah, what? That question <laughs> back at you. Let's see. We've been going for fifteen minutes. Cool. Um, you hear? You hear from the other side uh, of the of the wall? Uh, they say, "Timnith, stop fucking around!" <laughs> and Timnith uh, looks at you guys and um, starts to uh, kind of like summon a demonic fire, like right, he's kind of swirling his hands uh -huh. um, and he casts this massive uh, uh, green fireball at you guys. I need all, I need, um, I need Madden and Francis to roll a dexterity roll. Uh-oh, you're, you're rolling for two if I don't get a roll one, so don't blow it. <laughs> Uh, actually, not a good actually, sign. no, that, that, that'll be fun. Uh, name with Cindy and Stone, you roll one too. Uh oh. Okay. I got an eight, which is my highest roll so far. <laughs> Jesus it. Christ. I got a four. Oh, damn it. Okay. Name with Cindy and Stone, what's your dex roll here? TP. Uh, I have, I got a 10. Uh, oh, nine plus. Okay. One. Sweet. So here's the thing. Um,. You guys have been standing there. You see this orc casting the spell. So you kind of know something is coming. Um, Nameless Sentient Stone, you can even like sense the spell being cast. Um, and so as this fireball flies at you guys, um, Francis and Nameless Sentient Stone, you jump out of the way. Francis, you just jump out of the way. Nameless Sentient Stone, you actually have to float your way out of Madden's pocket. Um, because Madden is sitting there, and the thing is, Madden was like planning, like the first move in her head, like like all right, first I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do this. And as she's thinking about that, um, she uh, she doesn't notice a fireball in time, tries to jump out of the way, but you still take some damage here, Madden. Um, so what I'm gonna do is this. Uh, Madden, you take 12 points of damage. Um, and then, oh, and then I would like, uh, I would like the three of you to roll initiative. Oh, shit. Oh my god. Shake it ass, now move it like a gypsy, stop. Oh, back it up. Yeah. No. Okay, that time <laughs> it was worse. Yeah, same. Those, those dice are in dice jail, man. I'm gonna have to get rid of all, I, yeah. yeah. I got a seven. Okay. I net, I net one again. God damn it. Yeah. So what's your next character gonna be like? <laughs> Take a drink <laughs> with that <net> one. <laughs> and that one, Jesus. at least do it while you're rolling initiative. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Good point. And the nameless you know sentient what? stone, known far and wide for his alacrity, uh, got a nine. So <laughs> I'm running laps around all y'all with this niner. Okay. <laughs> so, who got, uh, sorry, we, ha we have a one from who? Madden. Ma Madden got nat one, nat one. Okay, great. I, mean, uh, I think the highest roll amongst you guys was the, the stone? Yep. No, yeah. God. <laughs> um, and then Francis, what did you roll? 
I, I, guess, oh, I, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. You 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 rolled in between that. I'm a tweener. Fair? Yeah, it was okay. It was a, it was that. Okay. Um, sweet. So here's what happens. Um, uh, two more um, uh, uh, mages come in and join Timnith on either side. Mm. Um, one of the mages is is a half elf. Um, you can kind of tell just by the shape of their chin, but they're all wearing the same robe with the same emblem, um, you know, the same markings. Um, you can just kind of tell by by the chin shape um, that that they're half elves. Um, of course, one of them is an orc, uh, uh, or the other one is an orc. Um, that one turns back to uh, to the door and says, "Buddy, round up the ice giant hearts and keep them safe." Um, and and then you hear from the other room, like, "Did you hear okay. that?" Okay. <laughs> and nice. it is. Um, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to use that that like demon fireball um, as the first attack, even though all of them beat your guys' initiation <laughs> rules. Oh, man, I'm a nine? Really? <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you don't say. Uh, and so, so the first one um, is the half-elf. And uh, the half-elf, uh, let's see, uh, Madden... Uh, so you guys are all kind of within about 10 to 15 feet of each other. Um, the half elf senses power um, coming from the nameless sentient stone and lifts his hand up and you see uh, you see uh, three uh, fiery uh, balls um, pop up, the three fire fiery balls um, and oh. he sends out a demonic uh, magic missile at you. And so I believe if my notes here work, that magic missile just hits. Mm -hmm. And then, so um, you're going to take, uh, from all these magic missiles uh, hitting you, you're going to take eight damage. So he like raises his hand and these things start to swirl. And then with the motion of his hand, they go and kind of swirl and they both hit you in different parts of your little stone body. Ow. And you take eight damage. Um, then it's it's the other one. Um, and uh, this uh, this orc who, who seems to be the leader, um, uh, she starts to uh, prepare uh, a fireball uh, similar to that first or to Timnith's uh, fireball, but it's looking very, very massive. And so she spends her whole uh, moment like building this thing, um, kind of like a soul bomb in, D in Dragon Ball Z. Um, and so you guys are just seeing this massive fireball get prepared. Um, and now it is uh, the uh, nameless sentient stones turn. What would you like to nice. do? Okay, so there's one orc and two half elves, and the orc is soul bombing or mid soul there, bomb casting a soul bomb. Yeah, there there BBC. are there are two there are two orcs. You have Timnith, the one that came in. Okay. Uh, you have the other orc who seems to be the leader, and she's the one that's preparing the soul bomb uh, fireball. And then you have the half elf that shot the little magic missiles. Uh, all right. Uh, can I? Okay, it's because I literally me, Matt Melton. Hi, I'm the guy playing the stone. Wasn't here yesterday. Have we encountered <laughs> this sigil, these this emblem, these demons before? Do we know what they're about? Um, if you would like to use, I'll give you a bonus action to do um, to do a history check. That's why I, I just—I was just making sure. It's like, oh, these guys again—the enemies from the whole oh, from the whole right. session. I definitely do, <laughs> no. If that's not it, then I definitely do want to that's, know a, a little that, something, something. That's that's not it. Okay, um, I'm gonna give them a so. brief look to see if I recognize the the, the belt buckle. Cool. Um, because it's you, actually, Your I want balls. you to do this history check with advantage. Okay. I'm Matt Melton. I get advantage on everything. I'm a stone. Wow, well, I wasn't talking just now. Was that? <laughs> I thought I heard something. Uh, that's a that's a twenty one. I think I think they're echoing again. Yeah, I think it's man. echoing again. Uh, it's a twenty one with advantage. Okay. Nice. So yes. here's the thing: you take one look at this belt buckle, 
and you recognize it as the emblem of a very, very powerful demon because you're drawing upon the memories of uh, your warlock that, that you uh, that it, you know you're draining power from. The thing is, though, this is an enemy demon. This is a rival demon to the demon that that warlock worships. So these are bad guys and not the good kind of bad guys for you. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, oh, so so and and so because because you see this emblem, you are deducing that these are some kind of uh, cultists or worshippers of said demon. Gotcha. Well, I had rather hoped that this little encounter would not come to blows, but it seems I am obligated. <laughs> Return your fire in kind. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> so I will. Well, man, shoot, man. Let's just let's go big or go home. So the one that's about ready to to, to spell bomb or mm -hmm. soul bomb or whatever, I would like to cast mind spike. Okay. Um... Uh, the target must make a wisdom saving throw. Excellent. Uh, I don't think a six is going to work. I don't think so. My save DC is 15. Excellent. So what happens to Soul Bomb Leader Lady? lady On a or failed lady? save, uh, they will take 3d8 psychic damage. Ooh. Grab another d8. Uh, also, and in the spell last concentration up to an hour, while it lasts, I will always know their location. Only while we're on the same plane of existence. Also, that they can, they cannot hide from me, and they cannot turn invisible to me. Cool. And also, so, it will take so 13, sentient. Thirteen psychic damage. <laughs> okay. Um, sweet. So what happens is as you um, as you send out your mind spike, um, you know this uh, this orcish uh, leader of of this little group of cultists is building up the spell bomb and they're concentrating so heavily on uh, on building up this bomb that your your mind spike literally like it goes into their brain and their head full on explodes um, brains and everything uh, go all <laughs> over the wall um, they it completely covers um, Timnith who was standing in the middle of these three uh, cultists oh. and uh, the 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 demon bomb kind of dissipates as this headless body just falls straight backwards. Um, and Nameless Sentient Stone, uh, can you roll a perception check real fast? I can. This is outside, this is outside of combat, kind of, sort of. Yeah, hmm. sure. Ooh. Uh, you said perception? Yes, please. That is a 21. Awesome. So, um, so as as this body falls back, um, you know, you, you were you were intensely focused on making sure that you hit your target, and it now it falls away, and it reveals in the doorway um, some candles lit. There's something up on the wall. You don't really know what what it is, um, but you do see Buddy. He uh, he's a very very short. Um, uh, He's wearing the same robe, but his hood's off, and he's just like this little, um, like, gnomish uh, guy, and he's holding a bunch of hearts, and he's like, Woo -hoo -hoo! And, he, and he just, like, runs off. Um, you can't really see where Like, where further went, into, the, into the room? Yeah, further just okay. away. Uh, you guys kind of, like, lock eyes. He locks eyes with a nameless sentient stone for a moment, and he's like, Woo -hoo -hoo, brings! <laughs> and he just runs off. I would run, too. Um, As a excellent. free action, I wipe the brains of the <laughs> of the guy off of my face with my mage hand. Take a, a little a materialized little hanky and just. <laughs> what an ugly affair! I have whole ugliness. You do all of that, um, Francis. It is your turn. You now have you're you're now face to face with the uh, with Timnith as well as the half elf. Okay, is there a chair in the room? Um, no, actually, uh, it, it, no, there's not. There's, is there there's any the map. Um, 
no furniture. Well, there's a bookshelf, but it's full of like scrolls and old books and stuff. Could I push the bookshelf over onto them? On uh, onto the two that are standing right there? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you want. I w that's what I'd like to do. Um, yep. Okay. Cool. Um, sweet. So you. <laughs> You look at the bookshelf and you're like, I got this. Um, and you walk over and you start to push the bookshelf. It's pretty heavy, so it takes a moment. Um, and you're just like pushing the bookshelf like further against the wall. Um, thankfully, you're small enough to get in between the bookshelf because you're like having to push it forward. And then you have to push it out from the wall a little bit. So it's close enough that the height of the bookshelf will actually fall onto the two things. and as this is happening, you're taking like 30 seconds to do it. Oh, it wow. is distracting everyone. <laughs> Everyone's watching this happen. Just like, what the hell is this guy doing? Cause you're like in your little like Eskimo, like poofy yeah. thing. And you're just like, like, I can do this. I, I can do this. I, I have this. ideas, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, and so, and then you push the bookshelf over onto them and um, they they're watching they're watching this bookshelf fall and they take a step forward um, and then the bookshelf just falls <laughs> behind them and makes a giant mess um, but then you uh, uh, can you can you roll an insight check for me oh boy I rolled a roll that's good yay I got a 19. You got a 19. Okay. You see them move and you're like, yes, I did something. <laughs> I, w I want to be like, how'd you like that, boys? That was just a test. <laughs> um, <laughs> the half elf and Timnith kind of just like look at each other and look back. Um, they look, they look at, their, uh, at their fallen leader whose brains have exploded. And they just, they're just like, this guy knows something we don't know. <laughs> um, Madden, it's your turn. Uh, Madden is going to uh, wave the pike a little bit and she's gonna channel divinity and then channel secret weapon. Uh, so the weapon is infused with positive energy. Um, so I add one to rolls and it is super, super bright. Uh, so yeah, it's fun. And I want to attack the closest uh, like enemy to us with that sacred weapon for the second of my. Uh, cool. So I'm I'm gonna say that the the, the closest enemy you have is the uh, is the half elf um, because that was on the other side of Timneth and and you were kind of hit by the fireball. Uh, so yeah, that's who that's who you attack. So go ahead and make an attack roll. That's. Okay, and plus one is a 16 16 to hit. hit, will hit. Let's roll damage. Nice. Let's do it! That's the wrong one. That's the right one. All right, that is... Ooh, good. That's a nine. Okay. Nine All damage. right, sweet. So, um, so yeah, you have, uh, you have your weapon, and you kind of give it a little flourish as you try to go for a swing across the stomach. Um, now you you kind of, uh, you miscalculate a little bit like the thickness of this half elf because the robe kind of covers up, um, but it hits just enough to come across the abdomen, uh, abdomen the abdomen um, and kind of and uh, slice at the half elf. And the half elf is like, ah, because it's a half elf. Um, <laughs> And then like. she, she, and then as she finishes, she just comes like, "Your evil will not conquer here." <laughs> um, like, wow, Madden, that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> the half elf kind of looks at Timnith. Timnith looks at the half elf. They look down at the leader whose head has exploded, and they're like, "They know something we don't know." <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, it's actually right about this time that Voca Verde comes like uh, down the little trap door okay. um, and uh, just kind of like barging in on this fight after uh, her conversation with Jarvis. I, Voca, what do you do? I just want to look up though as you're coming down, Voca, and like I realize it's you and I just turn my head away. 
<laughs> friends and Francis. Um, hey. What's uh? They're all all these bodies <laughs> about. Well, well so, just the so, one for now. <laughs> yeah, you just see you just see the one. There's one headless orcish uh, cultist body uh, lying anyway. on it. Brains are just covering the walls right now. Um, there are two cultists standing side by side um, that are covered in orcish brains. Uh, behind them is this fallen bookshelf that's just broken on the floor. Um, and uh, yeah, Francis is over in the corner looking very proud, but trying to hide from you. Uh, and then Madden, yeah, that's what you come into. What happened? Get, get down here now. I, I, um, I know, I know Voka's, um it's a stone, At, and it can talk. As this is happening, um, you you start you see both of the uh, the cultists uh, start to do kind of like a ritualistic spell uh, movement. As you guys are having this conversation, and they look very mean. Have you guys noticed how mean these guys look? <laughs> oh no, I, I think absolutely they look nice. agree. They look complete. <laughs> They push. I... Francis says, Bo- Voka, uh, Voka, uh, you, uh, if you would like to take a, a combat turn, yeah, I would. You can Thank have, you. Uh, you can have a reaction to Hydrate. this environment and what's happening. Okay. Thanks, Koka. We're taking that brief hydrate break. So, have I not been introduced to everybody? <laughs> is is my floating around being a stone a surprise? No. Well, um, no, you have. The thing is, your your interest. The, okay, Jarvis and entrance. the Nameless Stone actually didn't really have true introductions. You had these really weird interaction. Uh, Voka, Francis, and Madden. You all know each other. You guys have been trappers for a very long time doing this thing. You guys are the three trappers. Oh. Nameless Sentient Stone. You're really just there because uh, you recognize some warm people and that uh, maybe you can drain some power from them at some point, or they will lead you to a place that is powerful. Um, but there's no real, yeah, there hasn't really been a... Cool, But That's you all kind of I know. Figured. Yeah, you, you all kind of, you know, you know who Voka is. Voka sort of knows basically what you are. But yeah, Voka, uh, what would you like to do? I'm just gonna spring in there and just start punching. Um, cool. As you know, <laughs> I once I start punching, I never stop. <laughs> bum, uh, bum, bum, bum! <laughs> Everybody knows. So, that. so everyone knows. Um, so so I'm just gonna uh, uh, kind of like sh- fling into the action at the closest cultist near me, and uh, 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 I, I'm I'm gonna hit twice because I've got I've got that, and um, I'm gonna hit punch twice on arm strike. Um, the first one's gonna be 14. Uh, that hits. Great, great, great. I'm just like, Sorry. fuck them up, Voka. <laughs> um, there we go. Oh, baby. And that first hit's going to be for 12. Ooh. Nice. That hits barely because they're cultists and they just have robes on. Uh, that was your damage. That, was damage. that, was, that was my damage roll. Oh, that was your damage. I'm sorry. Okay, sweet. So, uh, uh, go ahead and roll your second hit. Great. That's gonna be 11 to hit. So. Okay, that one. That one will miss. Um, okay. So, so here's here's what happens. Um, you notice these two cultists standing side by side. They're they're starting to do their spell shit. Um, and you and you in a green blur um, uh, move to attack at the half elf um, and. Uh, you come in with this super sweet, like Jeet Kune Do, like Bruce Lee fist right to the stomach, which just so happens to be where Madden swiped uh, with with uh, their pike. You didn't know that, but uh, it worked out. And you and you deal this damage, but it, uh, because you hit in the exact same spot, this half elf is in terrible, terrible shape. And he's plunged, uh, actually tripping over the bookshelf that's behind them. Um, and uh, they fall to the ground and you're, they're like looking up like, ah! and just in terrible shape. You then with your second attack, um, try to do a, a left uh, roundhouse kick 
at Timnith, um, who sees it coming and just kind of like uh, barely leaps out of the way to avoid the attack. Um, sweet. Okay. Now it is uh, it's Timnith's turn. Um, Timnith looks down at the fallen uh, half elf uh, body and is uh, looks looks at the the orcish leader lady's body looks at the now four of you and just has this determination in his orcish eyes you can't really tell um other than um this this kind of like reddish glimmer that you see emanate from from the hood that's cover uh, covering his shadowed face and um uh, almost he let almost like with demonic speed he runs over uh or well he doesn't have to run too far because uh, kind of right behind him and he drives his uh, hand into the chest cavity of the half elf and rips out the heart Ooh. of this half elf and just devours it right in front of you guys Jesus. Um, as as this happens he hunches over um, his his uh, 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 you know arms and hands covering his body uh, and and it only takes seconds um, but he uh, he pulls his hands down, and with a loud roar, his his hood comes off. Uh, you now see glowing red eyes with this demonically bloodlusted cultist, um, and with superhuman speed, uh, he, he dashes at Madden um, and uh, knocks you to the ground. Madden, can you please make a strength saving throw? It. Do the thing. That's better. I got a dirty twenty. Ooh. Hey, all right. So, so here's what happens. Um, Timnith just uh, tackles you to the ground, um, but because of just how strong you are as an individual, and because of your uh, your your paladin armor, uh, you don't take any damage from the fall. But now you have this bloodlusted, uh, you know, superhuman demonic strength. Uh, cultist on top of you and uh, this this cultist gets right up into your face towering over you and says you will serve the fire lord um, and uh, the orcish mouth opens uh, beyond that which an orc would normally be able to open your mouth it's, it's this uh, kind of demon demonic power as it opens its mouth you see uh, flames in the back of its throat as it's as it's about to engulf your head oh god it's at this moment that um, from from out of the wall something breaks into the room. Cool um, man. It's it's it, oh, uh, yeah. actually, actually yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's actually from the ceiling because the wall wouldn't make any sense. Oh no uh, the ceiling. So the so so the sea there's part of the ceiling that collapses down. Uh, you guys see another cloaked figure um and again in this like superhuman just blurry speed um this this figure uh uh, blurs toward where this demon has you pinned down and uh and this uh basically picks the demon up with it as it carries it to the wall um you can't really tell what's happening but madden there's this brief moment it's almost like happening slow motion before your eyes as this cloaked figure is passing right over you as you're pinned to the ground you see what appears to be this lobster claw like come around the neck of of this demon and it goes right up against the wall um and it's at this moment that we're going to take our first break <laughs> beautiful <laughs> suspense so, I have everybody who it is yes we're going to be back in uh usually between like five and ten minutes but uh get another beverage go use the potty room and uh thank you for joining us we'll be back in five to ten bye bye
Hello and welcome back to the Bottle Cap Brigade and our special second episode of our three-part episode thick series, The Zenith of Frost Feather. I'm your Dungeness Crab Master, Austin Vaughn Johnson. And uh, before we jump right back into the session, Taylor, you had a thing. Yeah, um, I just have a confession. Uh, as you all who have been watching the stream so far know, <laughs> Uh, I, I've had some struggle rolling my 20-sided dice, mm. um, and the best thing to do when your dice are rolling poorly is to scrap them and get new ones, and there's no better place to get new dice than dice, nb.com slash the bottle cap brigade. They got all sorts of rad stuff you can find them. My favorite thing that they do is they've got these mystery pack sets, so you can just pay, I think there's a deal on the metal ones right now, it's like... $19 instead of 40 or whatever it is, and you just get a random set of metal dice, which I literally just did during the break, because nat ones shouldn't happen that often. And so now they're not going to, because of my new sick-ass dice from DiceEnvy.com slash the Bottle Cap Brigade. Boom. Bam. Thank Are they going to get so here much. before this is done, though? Because you can't you can't keep rolling those natty ones. Yeah. No, no, those <laughs> did ones, you, did those you ones are not even that. in the room. I, I like that one. I you roll in that ones more than 5% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Dude. Good stuff. Good stuff. The stepdaddy set is on sale as well. <laughs> Trauma. Uh, not touching that one. So. Yeah. Okay, hopping back into the session. So, you guys just faced off against uh, three cultists that you uh, mostly handled um the final one who had acquired some kind of demonic powers by eating the heart out of the other wounded one um is currently pinned up against the wall uh by another cloaked figure um with a with a lobster claw around uh, this cultist's neck uh you guys are watching in absolute awe because the past like 30 seconds have been a crazy blurry mess. You had the demonic blur happen that like, you know, tackled Madden to the floor. You then had this like animalistic, you know, superhuman speed blur that happened after this being crashed in through the ceiling and like pinned this guy up against the wall. And you're just watching in awe as this cloaked figure snaps the head off of this, uh, this demonic cultist and this orcish head falls to the falls to the ground. Uh, the body hits uh, hits its knees and then falls. And as both of these you know parts of this orcish body um, hit the ground, it, uh, it it all kind of disintegrates into a fiery ash with a very very subtle um, green flame um, that uh, you know as it burns out. You see uh, this um, this cloaked figure with the lobster claw uh, stand up uh, from from his pose that was a little bit more you know crouched. Um, the the head of the hood moves toward the door as uh, they walk um, through to whatever was happening in the ritual room. As they walk away, you can see a little bit of a monkey tail hanging out from the bottom of the cloak as they leave the room. Uh, I want to stand up or help myself up with my with my pike, and they just like casually walked into the room, right? The uh, the, they they casually left the room after yeah de decapitating this cultist. Uh, they and they left the room into um, basically the room that the cultists came out of. Damn. So so nameless sentient stone. Uh, actually, the it, it's it's walking right by you. How how far off the ground are you right now? Um, <laughs> I'd probably say somewhere between five and six feet, like okay. uh, like, like your average person head sort of area. Excellent. Um, so, so, um, the, it, you're actually v within the line, the walking line of, of where this, uh, this being is walking. And so, um, you get the scent. Uh, can I, uh, let me have you roll an arcana check for me yeah. real fast. Ooh, that's a twenty, baby! That's nice, a 20. let's go, hey. Matt. Those dice are rad. Where'd you get them? Was it diceheavy.com? I tell you, you'll have to bleep it out. 
due to ongoing uh, contract negotiations with other dice companies. <laughs> oh, you got it from your mom's house. I, I mean, I got it from Dice Envy, of course, obviously. There you go. <laughs> Taylor does that a lot. So, um, so you see, you see this being walking towards you after you know effortlessly decapitating this uh, this demon empowered cultist, um, and and using your kind of magical sense to kind of like magically size them up, you realize that perhaps uh, whatever they are or or you know, uh, could have been magically induced, there is nothing magical about uh, this being. Um, and they are incredibly powerful otherwise, um, causing you to, uh, you're impressed, but also a little disappointed because you kind of were hoping they could give you some power. But you get out of the way, you're like, oh, damn, this is, this is a powerful thing um, as uh, this being walks into the other room. Um, I do want to just say right when he like cuts off the head and starts to leave, I go like right when they leave the room. Whoa. Well, that's what I'm talking about, baby! Woo! <laughs> Francis, don't be inappropriate. I'm sorry. Um, Foka, you didn't see this, but they were really mean earlier, and they pushed over this bookshelf, and it was really nice. Francis? Yeah, man, I did Did they push over the bookshelf? Or did <laughs> no, you? they didn't, Madden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Madden wants to cast Zone of Truth. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's that do? Yeah. Uh, that. That's that's a hell of a you know that's a really good question. Um, it's this really awesome spell that Cat found. You create that, a magical uh, zone that guards against deception in a fifty foot radius. Yeah, that one. Oh, no. great. Okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> I already admit to it. You're like, just to be sure. <laughs> you do that. Uh, yeah. how, how far out of, uh, and it's a 60 feet? Is it a 60 feet? feet di oh, 15 feet diameter. Okay. Well, that, pr yeah. that pretty much fills up the whole room. You guys can't tell a lie unless you are standing in one of the corners <laughs> of the room because it's a circle. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we need to make uh, charisma <laughs> saving throws. Yeah. <coughs> um, Which I got like a sweet. 24, so we'll just move on from that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I mean, no one's kind of talking. We'll make, we'll, uh, yeah. I, um, I would like to follow our crustacean armed friend into the, into the next room. Oh, awesome. Okay. You do that. Uh, While you I'll settle this affair. <laughs> I, uh, do we notice the stone leaving? Yeah, it's it's pretty okay. clear that the uh, stone followed the the other guy into the room. I want to side eye Francis like a Francis, you know, like that. I'm not mad at you. I'm disappointed. Uh, and then uh, Francis is or uh, Madden is gonna follow the stone. Um, so whenever uh, Francis, can you please roll an insight check for me? Sure. I, I do want to just right when he goes Francis, I want to turn to Voca and be like, Voca. <laughs> I'm gonna notice that if if everyone else has followed the stone and Francis is the only other person in the room, I'm going to also follow the stone. <laughs> <laughs> I got an 18. <laughs> All right, so Francis, um, whenever whenever Madden uh, gave you that side eye, you interpret it interpreted it as uh, you need to apologize. And then Voka uh, follows everybody else into the room and we're currently left with Francis alone in the map room. I um, What did I do to Voka? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, so in, in the first episode, uh, or in the first, <laughs> yeah. Basically, in the first um, episode, Voka, Voka came in for a hug, yeah. You go, you tell it. <laughs> uh, Voka came in for an awkward as hell hug, like in this very like specific way that uh, <laughs> their culture <laughs> hugs. Like a wrestler? And, uh, yeah, it was yeah. Like, like squatted yeah. down, hands straight out, oh. and uh, 
hugged Madden that way, um, teaching her how to hug because she's awkward as hell. And but then tried to do that to Francis, but Francis doesn't like to touch people, so he did not hug Voca, mm. seriously aff- uh, offending her. Um, really bullshit. Well, I think I'll drink to that with a hydrate. Okay. And hey. a stretch as well. Hello. Mm. Uh, stretch this one right into my mouth. Mm. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. I'm like, and the, <laughs> Super just punch. in my thoughts, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I can do it. I can apologize. I can say the. I can say the right thing. I can be the right person for once. A good man. Someone that can be respected. Someone that people like. <laughs> <laughs> How long has the room been completely empty? <laughs> he looks right, he's like, oh god. <laughs> uh, no, Where did they go? Uh, uh, th- yeah, the room has been completely empty for about 30 straight seconds. Which wow. is, actually, when you're sitting there for 30 seconds, it's a pretty long time. Yeah. I'm like, I've, oh, and you just, I just like quickly run over and like step over this bookcase. I'm like, sorry, bookcase. And I go through the door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um... So as you go through the door, Francis, um, you are looking at um, everybody kind of like huddled around um, this. Uh, basically, it, it's some kind of like a, like shrine that's up on the wall. At the base of this shrine, uh, you see some demonic symbols on the floor um, and uh, some candles lit. In between each candle, uh, there's kind of like this violet, like, uh, very oily uh, consistency blood that is between each candle. And um, you look up um, kind of at this shrine and you see um, ki- almost like like uh, nailed to the wall, this child that's up on up on the wall. And, it, and, and and this this like really, like it, it, it fucks with you a little bit, and and you like you like rub your eyes and you shake your head and you look again, and it's not a child at all. It is this blue uh, kind of like amphibian like uh, <laughs> humanoid. How I get that introduced is... into every campaign. <laughs> it's actually true. <laughs> that is nailed to the wall. It's an oldie but a goodie. Uh-huh. <laughs> Am and, I alone? And everybody. Uh, no, everybody is is actually gathered around this blue humanoid, uh, trying to help them off of the wall. I just walk up yeah, next I'm to Boca and nudge her. I'm like, you don't see that every day. <laughs> I'm trying. So, how how would you guys like to get uh, Dre Goose off of the wall? So uh, is. Is the is the crab arm person try like is that what they is that what they came into this next room to do or what are they doing? Yeah, so so the crab arm person is also helping uh, 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 get him uh, get Dragoosh off the wall, and the crab person is kind of looking at. at uh, he realizes that Francis has finally come in, um, and and is like, um, well, there's there, there's really not a whole lot that you can do, but but um, but uh, please, just just help, just help. And uh, you guys are trying to get Dragoosh off of the wall. Okay. I like kind of like stop Mocha from going like, no, no, I got this. Uh, okay. Madden <laughs> wants to survey the room for, uh, to, is, he, is, she, is he chained up? Is that what you're saying? No, he's like nailed, like nailed through the hands. Oh, yep. okay. okay. <laughs> uh, he wants to... Madden, she wants to look around the room and assess to see if there's anything that we can use to help get up, uh, whether it's a ladder or furniture or a statue that we can bend over, something to get more leverage up higher to the. There's the a bookcase. Okay, cool. So, so, so as as you look around the room, this particular room, there is a, uh, um, you know, so you guys came in the door right in front of the door. Uh, uh, you you see this kind of like shrine and and, and ritual area. Um, if you were to turn to your right, uh, you actually there's a there's like a, a large um, ornate uh, table, um, almost like a desk. Yeah, yeah, it's a desk. We'll call it a desk. Um, it has a few drawers in it, um, and and over the top uh, there's kind of a, a sheet that's draped down, and over and on the sheet it has. Uh, you can't really tell what's what's on it from from the distance, but it appears to be some kind of like uh, tools or um, some uh, may, maybe weapons over there. Um, and then 
to uh, as you look to your left, you see a giant um, tapestry with the same demonic symbol that you saw on the cultist's belt. Uh, she wants to notice the table specifically. Like, ah, let's use this. This will help us get up high enough to get him down. Mm. Uh, could okay. would, would someone help I'll me? Help. Go help. No, so you got no, vote. Okay. Well, you all seem to have the situation in hand, as it were. Pardon the joke. That's a armless, faceless, sentient stone joke. Uh, I want to go find Buddy. <laughs> as, uh, uh, as the nameless sentient stone says this, Dre Goosh, y- you wake up. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I, I I'm gonna leave them to this, and I'm gonna go see if I can't find Buddy. Cool. Okay. So there. Uh, the only other exit out of the room um, is actually. So um, it, it's if you're looking at the 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 shrine, it is to your left. I go oh. that way. And and so and and as and as you leave, um, the 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 hooded figure with the lobster arms. Um, kind of turns back to the rest of the party and says, "What? What's that?" Uh, re- referring to the nameless stone that's floating off. They've uh, they've never seen anything like this. What is this. What's with the stone? The don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm also wondering what's the stone. <laughs> We don't know them. We know. Okay, that's fair. Um, <laughs> did did the stone? I can't remember in the session yesterday. Did the stone like tell us their backstory, or did it just show up? I just don't feel like it just kind of showed up and started yeah. putting itself in people's pockets. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, so you're saying I have a relatively blank canvas so, upon so, which to paint? Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Delightful. You you have you have an accent. You like warm shit. And you like power. That's stone. That's literally all the information I got. So yeah, that's, that uh, was more or less verbatim the text I got. So make it what <laughs> you will. Yeah. <laughs> um. So uh. So yeah. Okay. So Madden, uh, you you push the table over um, after like uh, pulling all the tools and the sheets off and everything, and and you push that over there. Um. Uh. This this figure kind of gets up on top of the table and using its its lobster claws pull each of the the uh the large nails out of the hands um of dre goosh um and the problem is uh no uh, nobody remembered to get uh the feet first and so the oh. feet are still tied oh and my God. Um, i fall forward <laughs> you just yeah you just kind of fall forward um <laughs> and let's see. Let's have, uh, yeah, Madden. Um, actually, uh, Madden and Voca Verde, can you guys please roll, um, uh, roll athletics, please? Cool. I got an 18. 13. Excellent. Um, Madden, um, can you please roll acrobatics? Sure, dog. What about me, Crab Master? There we go. What's that? 19. All right, perfect. So here's what happens. Um, so as Dre Goose starts to fall off of the wall, um, he, uh, uh, Voka, you move to catch him, um, but uh, you notice some of like the blood that is on that, that is between the candles, and you're like, ew. Um, and then, uh, but Madden, um, you are right there, uh, ready to catch Dre Goose, and you do so amazingly. Uh, Dre Goose falls into your arms and uh, and uh, kind of like over your shoulder more comfortable than he's been in a while um ah, don't worry don't worry i got you don't worry uh, uh and i want to i want to set him down like sitting on the table just gently uh, are, 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 are you okay thank you for comforting me oh. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's it's it is, it's our pleasure Pleasure is a strange word to use. I don't know how long I've been here. Uh, who are you? 
It sounds like he has a speech Where impediment. Only idiots have speech impediments. <laughs> Are you hungry? Do you need a snack? I am quite starving. Do you have anything yeah, rich in my... fats? <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> and I and I peel them perfectly. <laughs> He doesn't even have to fucking roll for it. No, you don't. So <laughs> That's one thing. If it's Boca Verde and it involves avocados, <laughs> that's a automatic feat. success. Yeah. I, yep. I go to shove the avocado into my mouth and it pushes out of. Some gets in my oh. mouth and the other goes through the holes in my hands. Oh. And I look down yeah. and I scream. I go. Huh. <laughs> 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 and, Let me get that for you. I'll just I so, can help you out. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of the holes in Dragoosh's hands, I just want to. Can I? Oh, so so real quick. I, this I, is like this is outside of the game, just a little bit. I just want to speak directly to our viewers right now mm -hmm. uh, of some of like the relevance of this. Before we started streaming, before Tac <laughs> became the Tac that he is, uh, Joe had a character named Parrot. And the introduction of Parrot involved uh, him, uh, he's a 14-year-old boy, uh, chained up to a wall. Uh, no, no, he was nails he was in nailed the hands. In, nails in the hands the exact same way um, the, the Bottle Cap Brigade came in, uh, ripped him <laughs> Rip off him of off the, the wall. wall. Ripped me off the ripped, wall. Like pulled down. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> Um, oh. And because of all of the damage that was sustained in this, uh, Parrot actually died shortly thereafter. Um, I played Parrot for, Parrot for 20 minutes. So you're telling yeah. me that as bad as that went with him falling down and with his with his feet tied up, that actually went much better. Yes. That was oh, amazing. you guys, The last yeah. time y'all yeah. attempted this maneuver. All right. Well, well progress. Th this, this time, this time, yeah. We yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. nailed it. No, as Nailed bad as that it. was, and like I don't, I don't want to like Un pass the fact that you guys did that real bad. There you go. But as bad as that was, markedly better than last time. So we're so there's improvement, is what I'm hearing. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just this this is uh, it getting better. It only took us ten months. <laughs> I was just hoping to p potentially heal some some, you know, parrot and tack trauma. That... Some RP trauma. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, but anyways, <laughs> okay. a little bit of lore for the viewers from when yeah. we weren't streaming. Love it. Um, um, as as I as I noticed that the avocados fall through his hands, um, <laughs> Madden just wants to say, "Oh, um, I have just the thing that'll fix." And then uh, he's, <sighs> he's gonna put both of her hands on his hands and uh, cast lesser restoration Great. to heal the holes. That happens. Can it can it heal the feet too or no? I don't think uh, so. I mean the, the the feet were just kind of tied up. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh, cool. It, it was it was more of a problem for like what happens when Dragoose falls off the wall. So, um, but yeah. Anyway. Got it. Sweet, that happens. You no longer cool. have holes in your hands, Dragoose. Mm. Yay! Um, uh, thank you, strangers. I. What are you what are you doing here? Can you guys understand? Why me? is that rock floating away? What is what is he saying? I'd like I'd like to cast uh, speak with animals on Dragoosh. So I can understand him. Because he's a lizard. Okay. I'm not a lizard. <laughs> I'm just blue. <laughs> <laughs> and part amphibious. I'm looking at him like okay. that's but a really big lizard. Common, right? <laughs> Um, sweet. So, Francis, you do that. Um, but Dragoosh, I would like you to roll a, uh, roll an intelligence saving throw. Okay. I got a 24. Cool. Okay, you so, um, Francis, <laughs> Francis, you, you... You cast that, um, and it in no way changes uh, your ability to understand Dragoosh. Dragoosh, because of your you know uh, uh, intellectual acuity, you know that Francis tried to cast Speak with Animals on you, which is awkward. Try speaking just, now. 
<laughs> I just look at Francis and I'm like, what do you think I am? I don't know how thorough this worked at all. What are, you guys are going to have to help. Because we're lost in translation. <laughs> uh, I just want to I, I want to introduce myself and be like, uh, my name is Madden. This is Francis. I'm and that's Voca. Francis. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Voca. We're friends. I'm sorry, by the way, Voca. Who, whose rock is what that? that? <laughs> what would you say? I'm I'm Francis. Francis, it's good to meet you. Uh, what was that? What was that other thing you said? Um, that's Voca. You know what? It's probably not important. It probably doesn't matter. I was just saying that. I'm sorry. Anyway, what what were you um what, saying, Jorgis? What? <laughs> what? Hmm? I I just stopped it. I said I'm sorry. I uh, get really low oh. and I put my arms out really far and I start going. It's really sorry! And then I start hunkering over. <laughs> <laughs> Try to hug. Is it the hug again? <laughs> Francis. Yes. No. Yes. I don't know anymore. I, I'm just, um, I just go really quick for like a little hug. And I try and get out again. Uh, if it can, is, does Madden notice Francis going for the hug? Uh, well, yeah. Here, I'm just I mean, it's yeah, all focus. happening. Okay, I, <laughs> You're like right there. I, the only I reason is at this point. Wall. We're uh, both no. staring. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, don't, yeah, I guess so I know. Okay, cool. Uh, the, the second only I see not, Francis go in. Yeah. I was going to say, the only person that's not in the Francis... room right now is the nameless sentient stone who followed okay. after Buddy. So he so he left okay. um, through that door. Everyone else is in the room. Uh, now, uh, the the cloaked figure with the lobster claws um, has kind of been inspecting the room as you guys are talking. Uh, they've been opening drawers, checking out the tools, looking at the tapestry. Just I like how everyone is just so chill with this guy. <laughs> Came through the ceiling, lopped off a demon head, and is like just rummaging the place. We have to figure out this hug situation, and now. <laughs> Lacking away like Zoe Brigade, Matthew, I'm excited you're here. I'm loving it. No, I'm loving it. Don't trust. <laughs> Uh, no, th yeah, I just wanted to, if, I want to hug the other side of Francis and do, uh, and do a hug sandwich if I can. Oh. Yeah. I'm really into a hug sandwich. <laughs> so, like, Did, I just like, kind of, like, start Roxbury. Patting, uh, yeah, I, like, try to get out, like, a oh. um, <laughs> And then sees it and she goes, oh, I know this! And then she's gonna do it on the other side and hug him. <laughs> guys, um, guys, is it, uh, STOP! Um, so as, as this is happening, um, the, the figure is over at the tapestry and you see a lobster claw just kind of like, like running at the top of its claw down the tapestry. Um, and it kind of turns to you and, and, uh, all of you and says, as, as touching as this moment is, um, it appears <laughs> that, uh, we've stumbled onto a problem for all of Magna. Uh, a problem? We can solve prop. Wait, uh, sorry. Thank you so much for coming out of nowhere. And what you did was absolutely incredible. Uh, my my I'm not sure if you heard before, but my name is Madden. Who are you? Good to see you. The the lobster claw uh, man takes the the hood off, and and uh, what you guys see uh, a human face. Um, with a um, a little bit of stubble on on the mustache, um, uh, you can uh, definitely used to be a mustache. And the weird thing is, like, you know how mustaches go kind of curly, right? You do you do the thing, you put the wax on the end, do little curls. Um, so that's the shape of this person's stubble. They don't have a mustache, but instead of like the curly, it's like literally on their cheek wow. and that's the only uh, stubble like, on their face like they shaved a handlebar into their <laughs> well they, they, they shaved one of the little like fancy curly ones not this one but it's like Got this it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyways um so they 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 take their hood off oh. and 
Uh, they say, um, hello, my name is Mud, and um, I, uh, and you're very welcome. Find you yourself that way. Uh, Mud, did you grow your uh, facial hair like that on purpose? He puts the. Um, that's that's the only way that it grows in. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't. Uh, I can't spend much time with you, uh, for, for I am on a quest of my own. Um, but looking around at, uh, at what this is, it, it appears that um, evil is a foot. It's a foot. Oh, it's a foot. <laughs> Evil's foot. He like stares at his foot. Like, oh God. <laughs> Um, and uh, well, uh, well, you're gonna have to you're you're gonna have to explain. Uh, we we are we are just mere trappers, but uh, but there's something uh, uh, about the forces of good and evil that I stand for, and I would love to hear more about. Uh, uh, I, I, explain how can we help? Well said. Um, and he gestures <laughs> toward the the tapestry. It says, uh, you see this right here? Athlete that is the foot. demonic. He, close. Very good little one. Um, this is the demonic symbol of Barathor. The Fire Lord. Uh, uh, Barathor? It's a, yes, it's, oh. a, it's a demonic entity. Um, and it appears that, uh, that these cultists are, are trying to bring him back. How can you tell? I mean, the symbol's right there on the fucking wall. Oh, I and mean, also, that was, that I, I, yeah. There's, there's a shrine right there. Um, I'm pretty sure they were trying to sacrifice you, blue friend. Um, hey. Also, there are candles. Any, any time there are candles, um, usually summoning demons. Also, um, pretty sure that's blood. Pretty that right there is. Pretty sure that's blood. Um, and uh, mud starts to walk over to to the the um, blood that's on the ground. I would like you guys all uh, to roll perception checks, please. Uh, not Jarvis or Nameless Stone. I got Thanks, 14. Guys. 13. I got a 19. Mm. 16. Cool. All right, so um, as uh, Dre Goosh and Madden, um, as Mud is walking towards um, this this blood that's on the ground, uh, you guys notice like in the, in the in the downstairs part of of Mud's robe, there is something <laughs> swinging as as they take their steps um, towards towards the towards the blood so mud's walking over and this thing's kind of swinging back and forth in the rope um and mud kind of leans down um his monkey tail wraps around his leg <laughs> and um and <laughs> and the monkey tail dips into the blood a little bit and like uh comes up right in front of his face and it's like yeah yeah that's uh that's that's ice giant heart these guys are totally trying to summon the fucking demon um and then as as mud you know takes a couple of steps back away you know the monkey tail still visible big old dangles are still swinging right in his downstairs robe swinging the biggest one um, I've ever seen. i want i want i want to avert my eyes cool <laughs> oh and then she looks away. Um, yeah. Embarrassed. I, I, I look at all the parts of his body that seem very animalistic, and I'm like, I can't speak of the animals. <laughs> <laughs> Not so going from before. Maybe you. Maybe you. <laughs> oh yeah. I, um, well, I want to. So we're just gonna play as targeted with, with the souls of the dead animals that are attached to his body. Um. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mud doesn't realize that you're doing this, uh, but you uh, learn nothing um, of the. And I'm of out of things. spell slots too. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so, so yeah, uh, Mud kind of takes a step back and uh, kind of just kind of scans you guys and says, um, "I know that uh, 
well, looks kind of like you guys are not a coordinated, coordinated group. Um, but if, uh, if you care at all about the world that you live in, you will need to stop the summoning of Barathor. Oh. Uh, and, 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 and how do we, and how do we do that? Uh, uh, Mud just kind of shrugs with his lobster cluster. I don't fucking know. I just stumbled into the cult. You, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be straight up with you. Uh, you guys oh. are damn lucky that I know anything about this ship. Um, now, d- d- yeah. Does any of this uh, cultist realm uh, basement area look anything like the trap door with 5G wizards that I saw earlier? Does this resemble anything of that? Um, I mean, the the trap door with the wizards, like it was just it, there were there was nothing sim, uh, symbolic on that. It was literally just uh-huh. a ladder and a trap door. Um, you know, it, it looks kind of like the trap door that could be, um, you know, that that uh, the trap door that you came down into the basement. But also, it's the trap doors, it's just like generic trap doors. So it doesn't mm-hmm. really, you know. <coughs> It doesn't strike you like they're connected, but I don't know. You have two trap doors in a similar area. Both of them go underground. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, uh, what orgy are you going to stumble upon? A good one. Exactly. Well, I just I just came from this other area where there was the 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 the, the, the that kooky wizard guy, the druid, and uh, uh, and and he found something. There was this. Um, this this trap door and he he said there were voices talking to him from the other side so maybe that has something to do i don't know with what's going on here hmm uh mud looks over at 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 the door that the nameless stone floated through and said well looks like there's more to explore um i wish i could help you but um i'm on a separate quest Um, oh you're you're leaving you're on this quest by now right (laughs) no i just for I a have few to more hours. There's, there, there's something else that's rumored to be in these mountains that, that I must find. I'm on my own path of redemption. Well, I, I guess we completely understand, and uh, thank you for everything. And then Madden wants to like put her hand out <laughs> for a handshake, and like, then there's the. It takes her like a second to realize it's a lobster claw, and like, uh, uh. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, the, once once you put your hand out, uh, Mud kind of takes a step closer, and his monkey tail kind of comes around, and the monkey tail shakes your hand. Mm. Ooh. He's not really much of um, a high five guy; he's more of a hang low. Now you, now you got blood all over your hand too. And, uh, so so, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, he hears Francis and is like, "Yeah, yeah, I get that a lot." Um, best of luck to you. And he, and he starts to head out, head out the door that you guys came in. And it's at this point that you guys can all see a little bit of a dangle in, in the downstairs robe. And, and as he walks out, you just hear, <laughs> hang low guy. And <laughs> just leaves the room. It, um, it's so cold and he's still so hung. <laughs> <laughs> What did he just say? <laughs> um, so oh. we're we're gonna we're gonna switch perspectives real quick, um, awesome. and uh, nameless sentient stone. Uh, you went after Buddy, and you and you followed. Uh, went through the only doorway that uh, you know you assumed that Buddy went to, and and as and as you floated through this doorway. Uh, you, you seem to find yourself in an underground corridor. Um, now, uh, there, it's not concrete on the walls, but dirt, and you see roots coming down uh, from the sides. There are, uh, there are um, torches kind of lighting the path. And you continue down a little ways until you come to a fork in the path. Um, you have right or left. Okay. And have I, I've, I don't suppose I've heard anything or, or, I mean, obviously so, he, he's got kind of a head start, so I, I don't suppose. Yeah. The th- I mean, you, you, because you left kind of early, um, you didn't, you didn't hear at all 
what had happened. Um, you're no. just kind of following your warlock in instincts. Um, they're like, wait, there's another dude, and I was the only one that saw him. You know, so um, so you're heading down. Um, at this point, go ahead and roll a perception check. I will do this. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Uh, twenty-two. Or sorry, Excellent. twenty-one. So uh, you hear coming from the left corridor. Actually, no, we'll make it the right. It doesn't fucking matter. We'll make it the right, though. Uh, you hear this um, uh, voice coming from the right corridor uh, that seems to be talking to something, but you only hear one voice, and it is very Southern. What do you hear? Uh, to Jarvis? Uh... Wait, 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 are you asking what I hear or what no, I'm... No, I'm asking, I'm so, uh, just, so, uh, nameless, nameless sentient stone hears you walking down the pathway, um, because you have stumbled upon the, the back door of their little underground, uh, ritual room. Word, um, uh... So what's what's this conversation that you are having right now? Yeah. Um, so what he's walking toward there. He hears. Well, of course, there was a second sorcerer on the knoll. John King Kennedy didn't just die. <laughs> didn't just die, mambly pambly. Of course he was. <laughs> oh, you're trying to tell me. Oh, you're trying to tell me that it was them. But I, I, I don't believe that. And for for one second, you know that the invasion in the, in them the Bay of the Pig people just didn't work out for anybody. So just you know, what. Of course they turned on a blue brains out. You all seen it. So nice. uh, you, you, you're you're hearing this voice, um, uh, and and uh, Jarvis starts to appear um, uh, in the darkness uh, from the right way, and now uh, you guys are are face to face. Um, and just to remind you, so Jarvis and Nameless Sentient Stone, um, you guys are the only ones that that sort of kind of, uh, I'm not going to say knew each other, but you guys, you guys met each other before you met the rest of the party. Um, so, so you guys were kind of like in terms of this, you have the three, you have the three party members and then you have you guys, which are, you know, probably more friends than the other ones. You've known them a little bit longer. And now you're face to face. Santy Stone. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're gonna go on break. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys so oh, much. We really we're gonna are. take another right. <laughs> brief five to 10 minute break. Um, so grab another drinky, take a little potty, and we'll be back uh, with more Zenith of Frost Feather in about five to 10. Welcome back to the Bottle Cap Brigade, ladies and gentlemen, and humans, and and halflings, and all of the other uh, creatures of D and D lore. Uh, yeah. My name is Austin Von Johnson, and this is episode two of uh, our crazy three-part episodic, uh, the Zenith of Frostfeather. Um, sure. So, here's what has happened. Nope, not going to do that yet because Joe wanted to say some shit. Yeah. Here's what's on my brain. Talk to me. Um, so we aren't able to do this without some cool people that we met along the way. We have talked about our friends Dice Envy, which I have so many cool dice. Did I get all the time checks out? Look at all those colors. Logger hands. Actually, you can't really tell, but they're really sparkly as well, besides the Naga hide. Um, they have cool sets on sale right now. Also, we have our friends, A Few Burnt Hairs. Oops. If you are into candles and D&D, &D, they have their new Warlock patron line that they're doing. Oh, yeah. Where each candle is based off a different Warlock patron. You could also check out some of our cool content on Patreon.com. Slash Bog Hopper Gate. Look at that. The alluring charm. That's our amazing. Crab I've master. <laughs> Oh, that's I've, I've actually blows my mind. That's so cool. I want the I old have, one, dude. I want the I've old one. I've already burnt this like 
uh, but it just it looks so cool, like a little like potion thing that I just I, I keep it. It's now it's just decoration. So mm -hmm. they're wonderful. Um, we've also need to thank Incarnate Maps for mm -hmm. helping us create some of our cool maps that we use in our campaign as the Bottle Cap Brigade, not in this spinoff of Zenith of Frostfeather. They have hooked us up with a year. So thank you, and we'll continue using your sweet maps. And thank you to all of our fun little friends who come and hang out and follow us and all that cool stuff. And Thoth, you can purchase one of these candles from A Few Burnt Hairs. They have Instagram and Etsy. And a website. And a website. There it is. All the Bing. things. Thank you so much, Joe. Okay, here's what's happening right now. We, uh... The, the a few of the party members were were came face to face with some cultists. Uh, Lobster Hand Mud, who is uh, who who uh, has been introduced already in the Bottle Cap Brigade universe. Um, some of you might know who Mud is and some of Mud's backstory. Uh, but came in uh, actually on a separate quest to sa saving them. Um, they hopped into the ritual room, uh, pulling Dre Goosh off of the wall, but very gently and gracefully, thanks to Madden's uh, strength and agility. Um, after uh, briefly speaking with uh, with Mud about the 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 kind of shit that they find themselves in, um, they learn about the demon Barathor, who these cultists are trying to summon. Uh, we don't really know why yet, but it can't be good. Uh, Nameless Sentient Stone has followed uh, the other cultist, Buddy, this tiny little halfling who has a, a arms full of hearts. Um, uh, trying to track him down, and has now come face to face with Jarvis. Um, so, real quick, before uh, Francis, Dragoosh, Voka, and Madden, I am going to give you guys like your choice of role that you'd like to do from the uh, the feats. Uh, so okay. you can decide. Um, uh, you know, what kind of check you want to do before these two parties join. Depending on what check you do and how you roll, I will give you guys information. So, um, you know, figure out, like, look at your look at your stuff, your, your skills, and tell me um, what roles you're doing. I'd like to do animal handling. Excellent. <laughs> uh, um, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do, re I'm gonna do religion. All right, so we have animal handling from Francis. Yeah. Uh, religion from Madden. Um, it's big hat. Dragoose. Drag Dragoose, what would you like to roll? <laughs> also, I'll do a religion. You're also going to do religion, okay? Yeah. And then Voca, what would you like to roll? Oh shoot, I didn't think I was included in this. I'm sorry. Um, wow, <laughs> baby boy. You are always in it. I didn't hear my name in the beginning of the roll call, so I was like, whatever. <laughs> oh, it is a roll call. <laughs> oh, it was cool. That was a cool moment. I don't get for it. Me. I see. It... <laughs> uh, come, come back to me. I, I wasn't. I You're wasn't... the last one. You can roll anything you want right now. You can do can... anything. <laughs> You you can you can literally roll like acrobatics, animal handling, arcana. You can investigate. Perception, I'm, I'm gonna do and, great. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do acrobatics. I'm gonna acrobatics my way. You don't want to intimidate. Okay, so you're gonna acrobatics your way to information. That there's yes. nothing wrong with that. All right, cool. So um, it's my highest. Francis, it's my highest skill. Francis, give That's me um, give me uh, an animal handling roll, please. Twenty three. Uh, Twenty three. Yeah. Okay. I'm really so. So, um, you know, uh, why, uh, what, what we didn't see uh, as viewers is um, after Mud left the room, you went over and you started to play like finger paint um, because you're Francis in, in, the, uh, in the blood, the little piles of blood 
um, that are around this uh, kind of <laughs> ritual area. And you can, you've been able to decipher because of the thickness of the blood and the way it's kind of splashing and, and like Disgusting. finger painting around that this is clearly uh, the blood of ice giants. Um, and so those are animals. There is, uh, so you you know, because this was all part of the ritual, that um, the, the ice giants and uh, ha play, a, uh, and the hearts of ice giants play a large role in summoning Barathor, uh, the demon. All right, that's, that's, so that's what you got with your information. Okay. Um, let's get uh, Madden, your religion role. What is it? <laughs> Uh, that's five. That's a 13. There's a 13. Okay, cool. Um, so, so, uh, before you left the room, Madden, um, you know, you have, you have, uh, Francis kind of like playing the finger paint, whatever, uh, you, you felt it might be wise to start opening the drawers. Um, cause you know, uh, documents are kept in there. And you stumble mm -hmm. upon some religious texts. Um, and on the cover of this book, you see the symbol uh, that matches the tapestry that you know you now know uh, is tied to Barathor. Um, and you open you open the text, um, and at the very, very top, all you see is a, the, uh, the word erupt. Um, and before you get an opportunity to read the rest of what is in this religious book, um, it senses your holy energy and starts to burst into flames. Um, I would like you to roll a quick ac acrobatics check. Actually, uh, make it slide a hand. Go slide a hand. That is a 16. 16, sweet. Uh, you, 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 you notice it's about to burst into flames and you immediately drop it. Um, and it falls onto, onto the ground and, uh, and bursts into flame and ash, similar to the way that uh, the cultists mm -hmm. burst into flame and ash whenever it was decapitated. Um, so so from, this, from this, you got that erupt. There's something about that word. Um, Dragoosh, let me get your religion roll real fast. Ten. A 10, all right. So uh, you are staring, you're just like staring at this tapestry. Um, actually, no, we won't, we won't make it. Can you tell this is improvised? Uh, you go over to the pile of like tools and, uh, and like that was uh, brushed off of the table. Um, so, so you're looking at these tools and you're like analyzing the cloth that was used. And you notice that this matches, uh, that some of the designs match the robes um, that were on the cultists. And you're like, holy shit, these things match. Um, let's get vocal. Holy roll. shit, <laughs> these things match. <laughs> Did you guys understand what he said? That was an acrobatic scroll with a 21. Hey! 21. Excellent. So, so Voka, you are looking at the tapestry, and um, and uh, so what you do is um, you like you run in a circle really, really fast. Um, and, but after you make the full rotation, you start to walk up onto the door and the wall. And as you are running on the wall, you like pull the tapestry off very safely to so as to not rip it. Um, and as and as you lay it out on the floor before you, you see that on the back of the tapestry, um, there is uh, there's there's wording written in a language that you don't recognize. Um, can I have? I just want everybody to make an Arcana check. Um, Voka, you do it with advantage, please. I got a 12. I got a 24. 21. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, paladins get advantage on arcana checks anyways. Stretch. I don't need it technically, but yeah, they everybody, do, right? yeah. So, um, sweet. So, uh, so basically, Voka, um, you uh, after doing this, everyone's like super enraptured by this cool shit that you do. Um, you're all kind of gathered around. 
Madden is super smart in their Arcana shit, and uh, they they recognize that that this is uh, this is like an arcane text um, that that requires um, kind of a magical sensitivity in order to even read, and you decipher through this that um, uh, how powerful Barathor is as the Fire Lord. Unfortunately, Nameless Sentient Stone is not here because they know a lot of this information. Um, and uh, you now know that it requires uh, a, a, a humanoid sacrifice along with uh, several ice giant hearts in order to bring Barathor back. And that uh, upon Barathor's uh, return, it very generally references the complete destruction and, and fiery doom of the world. Oh. So you guys leave the room with all of this information and uh, we're going to cut back to Nameless Sentient Stone and Jarvis. So you guys have just been reunited. Stony, what in Jax's green magna are you doing here? Jarvis, charmed I'm sure. Um, <laughs> you, know, you know, we've had our, we've had our encounters before, good and bad. Uh, but, but but still didn't answer that question of mine. What are you doing here? Why are you down here? Did oh did 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 uh, did did you really are you searching for the? What, what why are you down here? What's going on? Uh, well, uh, when's the last time we Jarvis and Stone were together? Um, I mean it's it's been several hours. Um, okay. So, so basically, what happened was was uh, Nameless Sentinel Stone. You you stuck with everybody in the cabin because you really didn't give a shit about the personal happenings between Jarvis getting punched in the face by Voka and all that shit. Still don't, um, by the way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, so, but but it's it's been a few hours. Okay. Um, and yeah. Right. So uh, did did well, Voka come? Did Voka come back to you? Why, yes, I do believe she came back. And uh, while you were off tilting at what I'm sure are very important fantasy windmills, we have stumbled ourselves upon a uh, uh, a plot, it would seem, uh, to, to resurrect a uh, uh, a demon. I knew Jarvis, it. can you make a uh, an insight check real quick? Insight uh, 17. Okay, sweet. Plus, plus um, 4, 21. Sweet. Oh, hell yeah. So, so Nameless Sentient Stone uh, says this, and uh, then your your snake skin is like, you know what? That makes a lot more sense. That makes so much more sense. Why would the 5G wizards be underground? You'd want it, them up in the air. Exactly. So what that makes me think is that this is the this is the Frost Flake party. Did you find? I turned to I turned to uh, I turned to Sentient Stone. I said, Did you find any kids in there? Did you find any children? Also, did, is this above a is this above a tomato bread shop? I know there's a demonic rituals going on involving involving children underneath uh, a, a, a tomato bread shop over there in, in uh, over in Brevin. I know there's one. It's the job as usual. I have about I understand about fifteen percent of what you're saying, but no, there were no children. There was a, a, a blue fellow, I suppose. A, a, Nailed up to the wall. I imagine they've gotten him down by now. Ooh, I myself fella. was uh, was running after a uh, uh, a small fellow, a halfling of some sort, who seemed to be tied up in all of this, and, and that's when I ran into you. Oh, that's interesting. As it were. <laughs> interesting. As uh, here here to forth with your fancy talk and believing what not but that I heard is only fifteen percent as well to you. So I um, <laughs> uh, are you with everybody else? Uh, I believe, unless something else has happened what, during my sojourn down this path, we are all present and accounted for uh, behind me. Just right, as right. he says that, uh, <laughs> Francis, Dre Goosh, Madden, and Boca Verde, you come walking up uh, this this corridor from from the ritual room, and you are you now see nameless sentient stone uh, rock to face with Jarvis. Speak of the devils, so to speak. <laughs> uh, uh, party, Hel hello there, you you bunch of in, in great. You ain't sitter slickers, are you? No, of course you're not. How long have you guys been trapping again? How long has everybody been trappers? Are you guys like 
Been up in my mountains a minute. I elect uh, Madden to answer all questions of our group. For about for 350 years. Damn it. It's the animal speaking again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, look, look, main thing important is uh, Stony here told me that you guys found the uh, the Cabal Lair of the Frost Flake Demons. Is that correct? Uh, as usual, about 50%, I would say. No, my friend, it, it is a ritual uh, uh, set up to... to to, re to resurrect Benethor, the Fire Lord, as he is known, and he is known well to me, or at least to the half elf soul battery that I'm using. I am using to power myself, uh, uh, unincorporated as I am in a physical person. Uh, I turn, I turn to the snakeskin, and I go, "We should probably go in there and find those kids, then, huh?" Um, uh, roll an insight check, or uh, roll a, a wisdom saving throw. Oh. Damn, that ain't too good. Eleven. Eleven. Um. Uh. Yeah. I. I mean, I don't know about these guys. That you know, it's look, looking at like what everything they say, and they they might be involved. I don't know. I just I just don't trust them at all. It could be. It could be. You know, I always thought that Giant Foot, who obviously runs around up in these mountains up in here, that Giant Foot is actually not. Uh, from this plane of existence at all. Do you think perhaps maybe it's giant foot that they're summoning? It's certainly no, I, that feet are evil. I, I, I could say with certainty that that is not the case. And also, I'm not sure who that who that person is. No, it is it is unmistakably Benethor, the Fire Lord. I, I know of him as a sort of a, a professional rival. He runs the the fantasy Wendy's to my uh, arcane Carl's Jr., as it were. <laughs> we, we are not oh, Hardy. I, must, I will say that. <laughs> Well, uh, hotties if you're on the east of the fantasy Mississippi, I suppose. All right. Uh, my uh, fucking Jarvis. Jarvis lights up a, a, a joint filled with hobbit leaf and uh, and kind of like points through the door like, uh, through the, through this way then? Back back through that way. Well, there was a fork in this road, and I would like to very much to travel down the other part to see if we can't find that small halfling creature, see if we can't find out where the rest of these fellows are. So, yes, of course, why not? All right, and lead, uh, go ahead and lead the way. Do whatever um, you want, and I'll do what I want. But if that's the same thing, then we can do it together. So uh, I'd like everybody <laughs> to roll. <laughs> there you go. Uh, roll perception <laughs> checks, please. Uh, I have to write that quote down. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to huh. do what I want. You do what you want. And if we're doing the same thing, then we'll go together. <laughs> I don't know Jarvis well, but I feel like that should go on his tombstone. <laughs> Perception's 14 for me. Uh, nat 20 for me again. Ooh. Hey, hey drink. Hey, cheers. Boo, 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 boo. Drink. 15. 13. 11. 11. Oh, no, no, no. Perception? Uh, yeah. 17. Sorry. That's very different. Cool. All right. So, um, so yeah, yeah, everybody that uh, rolled over 15... Uh, here's coming down the left, uh, uh, coming down from the left kind of corridor area. It's kind of faint because it's pretty far away. You hear this, oh, come on, like, it needs to work. It needs to stupid portal. God damn it. Did he say portal? Portal, you say. Did he say God? Wait, who the fuck's this blue person here? <laughs> I'm sure I don't know. And I take off at whatever uh, is the equivalent of a sprint to uh, to stone to sentient stone uh, after um, the the buddy. I'll follow. I right. Madden goes. I'm going. I'm just staring at the Vidalkin character that's sitting in front of me, who I haven't met, uh, and, and just sort of uh, like kind of mumbling and talking to my stick and my my snakeskin because <laughs> I didn't hear that. I rolled a 14, so I didn't hear anything going down that way. That's true. Um, can you do a wisdom saving throw? Moi? Again? Yeah. Yeah, Jarvis. Oh, man. Not good. Uh, 13. Uh, oh, I mean, it's, it's solid enough. Um, so, so you're like, you're looking at Dre Goosh and you're talking to your stick and your, and your snakeskin sticks up. You know, I, I really like that one. Look, look at how... I feel he just looks like a like a trustworthy individual that has that has been around the block a little bit. I mean, you know, Jarvis, I know how much you like to sit on the front porch of a thing and 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 just like smoke and drink with with wise old people. He looks like a wise old person. 
Well, you know, I ain't got no no nothing against the donkeys there, little twig man, but but you and me both, along with Snakeskin here, we met in the Vidalkin War. Have you forgot that? Uh, so both both the uh, the twig and the snakeskin kind of look they look at you in whatever way they can and simultaneously <laughs> they're like no <laughs> uh, all right then well maybe perhaps I, I could have sworn that's where uh, I, I, sh- I, I put uh, my hand no no they did not forget oh well good good you didn't forget because that's it, it, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my friends were lost up in there, and, and, you know. And the big thing was for me is, you know, we're talking about the. We know that they went up there looking for the trolley nest monster. It wasn't actually anything about, uh, you know, uh, 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 cakes or yellow cakes or nothing or uh, taxation or whatnot. But anyway, I, I hold my hand out as I'm I'm sitting here talking to these two snakes, or whatever. I hold my hand out and I say, I said, "Well met, uh, a Vidalkin, uh, a person. What's your name?" My name, my name is Dregoosh. All right, Grey Goose, good to meet you. I ain't much for Dalkin names. I'm not really good at speaking that Dalky language, but um, it. it seems like everybody else kind of ran off. So uh, I'm, I'm going to head this way, and it's not because you're a Vidalkin or anything like that, but I'm just going to go this way, and I'll uh, you catch up with us, Grey Goose. Good, man, good to meet you. Man, good to meet I'm you. really fast with you. Oh, let's boot scoot then. Boot scooting boogie. <laughs> <laughs> Which direction are you guys heading? I knew he was wherever a wherever the other people went. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Silly Sweet. goose. So you guys, uh, <laughs> most of you are, are 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 heading off towards the direction that you heard the super high voice uh, kick a have a problem with a thing. Uh, Dre Dre goose uh, Dre goose and Jarvis, you guys are boot scoot boogie in that way, uh, which is only slightly slower than a full sprint. Um, and you guys um, are, are, are running a ways. Um, that direction doesn't have any other forks, um, and and you're all you end up uh, all coming face to face with this portal, and you see um, you see this little like halfling uh, buddy with his hood off. Um, all of these ice giant hearts are in his arms, and uh, this portal is illuminated with with, with a fiery red uh, kind of like warp. Um, thing in the center. It's on and it's red. Um, and uh, Buddy turns to all of you, just holding these things, like, ha! Yeah, well, you're too late! And he jumps into the portal. Um, the moment he does that, um, the the runes light up, and uh, then and the portal starts to close very, very slowly. As uh, as all of the runes kind of flicker um, in, in almost in kind of a different order than uh, than they were previously. Can I make an Arcana check to see if I have any idea of like based on what it looks like and and the runes around it, like where the other end of this portal, like even a suggestion of where it might go? Absolutely. Cool. Can I assist in that or no? If you want, sure. So yeah, I'll, I'll assist. So you, Stone, you go ahead and roll right. with advantage. That's great because that first one was a four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe we could work with that. What's my character sheet? One more again. Canna is plus three, so that is a twelve altogether. Okay, um, so the the thing is, you were you were really so focused on on finding Buddy, um, and you're a little bit distraught by the fact that now you've basically lost him, um, and and, and uh, because you're kind of like shaken up by the whole experience, it's it's disrupt it's it's you know messing with your ability in the moment to read these. Um, you do notice one of the runes. Uh, which is which is clearly a, a, an arcanic um, uh, symbol um, for mountain, um, and and that you recognize, but the rest of it just in your frustration, you, you, you just can't decipher in the moment. I'd like to grab the stone. Okay. Wait, me? Yeah. I don't want you to do that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's do a let's do a grapple. Um, now I think I was gonna give I was gonna give Francis advantage because it's a stone, 
but Francis is so short that the disadvantage cancels. So yeah, you guys just do contesting equal, grapple rules, please. Footing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got an eighteen. Okay. And. Uh, sorry, I totally just closed out my character sheet. Let me pull it back up. I meant to click on it. Uh, <laughs> Exit out. This, this, is, this is a new laptop, and it has two USB ports, and I can't use my wireless mouse, so I have to oh, use the dog yeah. shit. Uh, trackpad and That's it's not fine. going great. Uh, oh, great in the meantime you can check us but out I can't, on I can't make the roll at least <laughs> oh well now I got a 17 I'm not sure what modifiers are but no. I might be close to not letting you do that thing that you want to do yeah. <laughs> oh everybody drink while this is happening okay what, was, what, am I, what was I rolling in athletics uh, uh, yeah strength. so uh, strength just roll strength. Oh, unsurprisingly, I get no bonus for strength. So it's just a straight up 17. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So, so the thing is, so you, so you grab the nameless stone, Francis, um, but you, you're, you're really struggling to control it. This, this thing is levitating hard. Unhand me, sir. We use our words where I'm come from, where you don't need to know about. Okay, guys. <laughs> all right, all right, wait, hold on a second. Um, like he puts down a phone, like to the side. Like, hold on a second. Okay, guys. Uh, I think the best option is is to test to see if this portal's safe or not. And he's like, and he just goes. He like tries to throw oh, a stone yeah. through it. <laughs> wait, 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 I feel like you're infringing on his liberties. Please stop that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm so like, here's what's, what's going to happen. Um, so, Francis, I would... Uh, uh, Jarvis and Voka, I would like you guys to roll persuasion checks. And, Francis, I would like you to roll an insight. Um, Francis, what's your... What's your, uh, what's your insight? Pretty good. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm rolling hot tonight, boys. Uh, I got a 19. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> what are the persuasion rolls? I I, it's an 11. It's an 11. I tell him. I say, look, you know he's hungry for power, and it's rumors that there's technology like this under Arena 51. Yes. Uh, in Musif, <laughs> about 50 miles north of Sarid. You could be giving him exactly what he wants. That's true. Um, I rolled a okay, 19. Well, like, deny. You rolled a 19. Oh, yeah. oh, excellent. Oh, yeah. All right. So, so here's the thing. I'm going to, um, uh, I believe the contest succeeds if they're tied. So, um, sweet. So, Francis, you're about to throw the nameless stone, and Voca Verde sto uh, uh, stops you, or attempts to stop you, and says, Wait, 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 hold on. I'll just, I'll just throw my avocado that way. The stone doesn't have to get hurt, okay? Well, no, maybe. That actually makes a lot of how, sense. How? Yeah, we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm if sorry, he's still holding so... me, I'm going to cast Produce Flame uh, centered on me. Uh, I'm going to respond by using ah. Control Flames. <laughs> I'm going to move it back <laughs> onto him. Okay, um, I mean, so but I feel at, like I'm in control. <laughs> produce flames, fire be. Is produce uh, flames yeah. magical fire though? Because I can't. It has to be natural fire. I don't know if it's... it. It actually doesn't do any damage. Um, I, I can't. I can, let me say this. I can attack with it, but I'm not attacking with it. I just want to burn your hands so you let go of me. So so okay. okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like burning my hands. Like, is... I chose this. <laughs> As I see this happen, I, I say, uh, I say, Stone, so, you're always talking about how you're trying to get in people's pockets because you want to be warm. Why aren't you just casting flame on yourself all the time, my buddy? <laughs> so, Produce <laughs> Flame oh, no, says, no, 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 no. says it harms neither you nor your equipment. So. I'm going to I'm going to treat this as you're trying to scare Francis into letting mm. you go. It, um, yeah, I'm not trying to do damage. It's like it's like it touches a hot stove. Like I want to do like that. Ah! Cool. Um can, uh, can you roll um roll persuasion for me? 
Uh, uh, Nameless Stone, yeah. Oh, Burnt Ham is pretty persuasive. I'm gonna roll with a big guy. I got one of these, I got one of these biggies. Lights up, when you, when, lights up when you roll a crit, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> what? Seriously? Yeah. Uh, it rules. Uh, was it like a white elephant gift from a few years ago. Uh, that's a 17 plus four. Excellent. Ooh. So, so yeah, um, this, this flame appears around the nameless stone. Francis, it scares the shit out of you so much so that you can't even react to it. You totally weren't expecting that. <laughs> Take that. Sweet. Uh, so, so you're 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 free of of his grasp of the tiny hands. Um, is the is the the portal I assume is still closing? It is. It's closing, and it's closing at a slow pace. And and these these lights are, are the the runes around the portal are still kind of flickering. Did I learn anything from throwing in an avocado? All right, so yeah, so you throw this avocado in there, um, and you see the avocado pass through the the portal. Um, and I mean, to your best knowledge, as you see it pass through, it it doesn't disintegrate. It does. It's not harmed in any way. There's no harm done to the avocado. Um, and your knowledge of avoca- avocados is that avocado skin is very similar to, you know, humanoid skin of various mm-hmm. kinds. So, um, mm-hmm. but as as it passes through, you do see a specific sequence of runes almost like pause simultaneously in the randomness and so they pause and then they go back to to flickering all over the place oh no i'm gonna need to throw in another avocado to see if it's the same (laughs) runes sweet so you so you throw in another avocado it's one um, with a different and... uh, different fat consistency because some some human <laughs> beings have different fat consistencies as well. It might be good to test it. <laughs> do you do that, Boca? No, I throw in my same avocado. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you know what? Uh, you do what you want then. <laughs> and I'll do what I want, and, and I'll, do, I'll do whatever I want. Put it together. <laughs> So, um, so Voka, you 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 throw in a second avocado, and um, you see you see the sequence of runes pause again, um, and I would like you to roll a perception check with advantage. Um, I, I don't think I have. Oh, great! Uh, Nineteen. Excellent. So, um, so. Uh, you knew exactly, you kind of like had a feeling of what was happening here. And, and so you were like really ready for something. You notice it's, it is, it is a different sequence of runes, but there is one, there is one that is the same. And, uh, and you feel like, because you don't know what these runes mean, you feel it important to share with the rest of the group which rune stayed the same? Cool. I relay that information. Sweet. Uh, Voka. Uh, so as Voka shares that that information with the rest of the group, nameless sentient stone. You rec- you show that Voka is pointing at the mountain symbol uh, that you saw earlier, um, deducing that essentially it, it's it's reasonable to believe that this will send you to a different part of the mountain, but you'll still end up on the mountain. Um, is this, am I, am I able to deduce, is there in, any similarity between like the mountain rune and the uh, the volcano uh, portrait above the uh, fireplace? I heard about it like four times. Mm, yes. Connection. So here's the thing. Um, when you guys were uh, were in that room and you saw the volcano portrait that, you know, um, uh, you spent no time whatsoever um, actually taking a close look at it. And so um, really, as you, as you look back, you're like, oh man, that would have been a really good idea to check that out in greater detail. So unfortunately, yeah. Uh, it doesn't give you any information. Good. These good, runes good. these runes aren't written in giant or anything like that, are they? There's no giant writing. Um, go ahead and do uh 
kind of what kind of role would that be? Oh yeah, because you speak that shit. Um, That's right, I do. Come on, you think with an intelligence like mine, I wouldn't speak giant? <laughs> yeah, whoever made that character really did a good job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like he knew the story. Uh, you know, uh, uh, as long as you. <laughs> Never mind. Just tell me. Let's go. Let's go. Um, uh, no, you don't. You don't recognize any. Of I, it. I did um, recognize giant hearts. Did I recognize that those were giant hearts? Yes. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, um. Yes. Yes. When whenever you saw them in the hands of of a buddy, the halfling cultist. Um. Yes, you did recognize that those were giant hearts. Uh, the 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 portal is, Madden... is, is closing more and more and more. Oh shit! Does Madden? Uh, uh, I'm assuming when Voca points out the mountain symbol, Madden can understand it as well because of her religious knowledge. Uh, I mean, I'm well. Na- nameless stone. Or I can roll for it, or whatever. Well. I'm just gonna say we all know, right? Yeah, nameless stone. I'm just gonna like it didn't happen. Okay. But- Nameless Stone did not keep okay. that information from you guys. Uh, what yeah, information you basically, is that? Cool. When, when, the, mountain, mountain the mountain. The, 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 the mountain the, symbol. The, yeah. So basically where you guys are at at this point is that you know that um, as this portal's closing, um, it the uh, all of these different symbols are flashing, but you can deduce based upon Voka's um, perception as well as Nameless Stone's knowledge of the Arcana that it will send you someplace on the mountain. Yeah, you know, that's what they'd want you to think. The opposite of the mountain <laughs> is the uh, the desert, pretty much. So I still, you know, I turn to I turn to Twig. Arena 51, I'm telling you, right? This is technology that we've never seen before in our lives. Um, can you roll a wisdom saving throw? Uh, <clears throat> that'd be a 13. <laughs> um, uh, and, and you said that to Twig? Yeah, 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 Twig for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, but the problem the problem is, though, we are so far away from Musiv, and this is clearly, uh, th- this is clearly an issue with the ice giants, which is your friend. You remember, you remember Charlie? You remember that great conversation that you had with Charlie? Of course I did. He, he, he brews his own moonshine. We smoked like 17 joints that night, of course. Oh my, th- well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm still a little bit, I'm still a little bit uncomfortable with you smoking plants of any kind. Um, I, uh, uh, I, you know, it's nothing, it's nothing against you. You know, you eat up the sunlight and you don't see clerics coming around talking to you about your food. You know what I'm saying? True. You, you make, you make a fair point. I just want to express. You just do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. I, uh, and I, and I, I start running towards that portal. All right. Um, so you're, everyone sees Jarvis running towards it. While uh, I'm while I'm confirming to the snake, like right snake skin, I'm like ah! <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right. I've a pretty good feeling about what's going on, and I'm I'm gonna run as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to dive in. Well, Voka, and then uh, I want to follow, and then I want to try and grab the stone and bring it with me as I go in. <laughs> well, I slide right into your pocket. Let's go. <laughs> I got you. What's yeah. up? Back, back to the pocket with the with the lady. Let's do it. Cool, jumping in. So, Francis and Dragoosh, what's up? It's are we the only ones still in there? I just look at him like, I'd say something to you, but you don't even you don't even know what I'm saying, do you? I, I honestly don't know how to respond to you because do you think I'm an animal? <laughs> but I, hold on, I'll find a treat. Um, oh. I find a piece of dried salmon <laughs> that I apparently have. Meanwhile, like, the portal is, is just... <laughs> I'm just going to run off and jump through the portal. I'm like, he's such a bad and say, reptile. <laughs> see you later, skater. Um... Francis, his eyes narrow as he watches this portal starting to close, looks around him to his left, to his right, the area, the room that he's in, decides 
Well, I guess fuck it. And he just runs it straight forward towards the portal and dives right in head first. <laughs> cool. Okay. Hydrate. Everybody hydrate. Thanks, Trash. Hydrate. <laughs> Ashley's been waiting long enough to press the button. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. I'll All right. respond to a, to a thing on, on Twitch. When that happens, I'm just yes. doing as the Romans oh, do. Oh, yes. I, when, <laughs> they're making us drink right now. Yeah. Delightful. Yeah. All well, right. thanks, Trashley. Uh, so here's what happens. Four of you are, are pretty decisive. Uh, Jarvis being Hydrate the again. primarily decisive person. Thank you. Um, and uh, Voka, Jarvis, Hydrate. Nameless Stone, and Madden. You guys um, all nearly simultaneously jump into the portal. Um, and I'm just going to roll a d20 well, fast. Um, I think I saw, excellent. I just opened up the Twitch. I think we have another hydrate. I think it's a double hydrate. Ooh. Double hydrate? Hey. Boy, Joe, Double hydrate. Double hydrate. Fantasy animal vegan. Love you guys. Got you, boo. Oh. Um, excellent. Okay, uh, and here. so... Francis and Dre Goosh, though, you guys lagged a little bit behind everybody else. So oh. uh, what ended up happening as, as the four were decisive about jumping into the portal, a sequence of runes lit up. And then you guys paused for a moment. And, you know, Francis, even though you, you, you went in a little bit after Dre Goosh, it was close enough that you guys also jumped into the, the portal, not realizing the portal had already changed and a different sequence of runes oh, no. has now lit up. <laughs> and, be and before we find out what has happened to the party, we're going to take our last break. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so we're going to come back in another five to ten minutes uh, and find the conclusion of, of what happened to this episode and neat things with Get a drink. We'll see you in five to ten. It has happened to this episode. <laughs> 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 yes. Worth the wait. Uh, you are tuned in to uh, the, the, the second episode of our very special uh, three-part Zenith of Frost Feather. Um, if you're watching right now, that means that uh, you are either a true fan because you've been watching the entire time and we love and appreciate you, or maybe you're tuning in uh, just you just stumbled upon us uh, here within the past little bit. Either way, um, we are the Bottle Cap Brigade. Find us on Instagram. Find us on Patreon. Uh, support our friends uh, and us over at diceenvy.com slash the Bottle Cap Brigade. Um, and we have a wonderful community that we're building. Um, you know, a few burnt hairs uh, are just amazing people. Um, you know, check them out uh, as well on Etsy and Instagram and check, uh, look at their candles. Uh, then also buy them once you find the one that you like. Yes. Also Incarnate Maps. Um, they are uh, one of our newer affiliates and we love the quality and the design. Um, so if you uh, need to build some maps for your own campaign or just for the hell of it, uh, check them out as well. Um, then also a, sh a big shout out to all of our other friends uh, like Grace and uh, all the other people um, that uh, regularly comment and chill with us. Um, Fantasy Animal Vegan, you're, you're wonderful too. And if you want to be a part of our little community, just keep doing what you're doing. Watch us on Twitch, subscribe to our YouTube, and let's be besties. Aww. Anyways, we Austin. are now at the final part. <laughs> of episode two of our three-part episode. The party has just jumped into the portal that Buddy the Halfling cultist um, jumped into. <laughs> the problem is they jumped in at a little bit different time. Um, and so uh, now our party's split again. 
Um, four of you end up in one place and uh, two of you end up in another. Um, I determined where, uh, where these locations would be with a die roll. And uh, so the first four, you guys got a nat 20. Let's and go! We are going to... Uh, Final boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So everybody drink to the Nat, nat 20, 20 cheers. Everyone while watching? Mm-hmm. Nat 20 cheers. Um, cheers 20 cheers. <laughs> I'll now, do it again. I'll do it again. I don't care. Jump high five to start. Right. Yeah. Francis jump high Andrigas, five to start. You guys rolled an eight. So we're actually going to be looking at your perspective right now. You guys both jump into this portal and uh, and um, the, the portal uh, after after you guys uh, jump in, um, sensing that there's like no one in front of the portal, almost like an elevator with a little sensor, like, okay, nobody else is waiting to go in. It just closes like really, really fast after you guys. Um, and you guys are like spiraling through um, this like this like red vortex of like almost like hyperspace around you. And um, then there's a there's a red <laughs> portal that just kind of like opens up inside of a cave and you guys both oh fall God. on uh, to this to this cave ground um those, and, those donkeys. And the portal <clears throat> closes behind you um and and you guys are now um outside um all you really know is that at this point that is that you're in a cave well well little friend um yeah, I, I don't know if you understand me because you think I'm an animal, but uh, uh, we're in the wrong place, I think. I think we're in the wrong place. <laughs> Can both of you roll perception checks real fast? I kind of stare at him in like amazement, like, wait, did he actually hear me? Um, I rolled the, let's see, modifier. Perception. Oh, 16. 15. 16 and 15. Excellent. So, yeah, but there um, was a winner. Yeah. One of them was higher than the other. It's, it's, it was a golf score, though, on this particular one. <laughs> um, so, you guys, you guys know, look baby. around. You confirm that the other four are not with you at all. Um, and you see that there's there there's some portion of the cave that's a little bit kind of like shrouded in darkness, um, just because it's it's kind of deeper and further away from the light. And as you look out, um, you can kind of tell uh, uh, by the way that the snow is falling in the thickness of of, of the uh, kind of near blizzard uh, that's happening that you guys are much further up the mountain than you were previously at the cabin and because the higher that you go the more intense that gets and so um, with your perception you can kind of deduce that okay um i i Francis, I, I, lean... I am i'm deducing we are higher up the mountain than we previously were <laughs> i just lean over to dragus um and like I don't know how tall is Tragus? Is he a big guy? I'm, I'm not big. I'm five eleven. So I'm a little guy, I think. So yeah, I'm... you're 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 not. Okay. It's more like you're, you're reaching. Yeah, I just walk over and I just like touch your uh I don't know your knees and I'm belly like, button. Your belly button. <laughs> your belly button. I like, touch your belly button. Like it's okay. <laughs> we'll find you some snacks soon. Now, <laughs> let me think about what we can do about this. We seem to be lost out here. Um, uh, it seems like we're, we've raised elevation. Do you, do you know that word? Elevation? <laughs> <laughs> like, when he was giving his weird little speech about it, getting me snacks, I, like, pat his hand on my belly, and I think to myself, Oh, looks like I'm, I'm fucked. I'm left with him. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked me that elevation and I, n I nod <laughs> he's like okay okay no more no more whining we gotta sort this out um well so um uh, we're just like on a on a mountain and it's snowy you're you're you're, you're, you're in a cave so oh, you, i mean you, ha you have a little we're, bit of shelter. sheltered yeah, you are sheltered um 
but uh, as you look out the opening, yeah, you're, you're further up the mountain, and there is a portion of the cave that is uh, kind of shrouded in darkness. Yeah, you don't really know how deep it goes. Okay. Um, I just want I just want to like, go on, boy. Really. Go check out the cave. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I just look at him. I kind of look down, and I start walking. F I'll, I'll explore. I, I'll walk further in the cave, and I turn around, and I double flip him off. I'm like, you're doing and great. walk backwards doing for a little great. bit. <laughs> I go back <laughs> further in cool. to investigate um, what's in the cave. I'm like, bark twice if you see something. Bark once if you don't. <laughs> um, can, uh, yeah, go ahead and roll a perception check, Gregus. Man, I'm crushing these 12s. It's probably 15, yeah. Roll 15. Sweet. Okay, so um, as you as you're like double birds and I'm like backing up, um, you you kind of uh, I don't know you get about twenty five feet away and you start to turn and and uh, you're kind of at the point where it uh, previously begun uh, started to get kind of shrouded. Um, it's like that 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 line mm -hmm. and you hear this really low grumble from deep in the cave. Was that you? I go back to the opening. <laughs> and I want to be quiet. <laughs> uh, sweet. Uh, roll, a, roll a stealth check, please. Apparently I have advantage on stealth. Uh, I rolled a 23. Okay. Yeah, you do so. Um, and you... Uh, yeah. I want to like get you up make to it Francis. back to the start. Yeah, and I want to whisper, like, <laughs> "Get the fuck out! Get the fuck out! Get the fuck out!" And I'm gonna just, like grab his hand to start walking up out of the cave. Oh, well, okay. What's this way? Um, I want to, yeah, look for a path or something. Or sweet, uh, a Dairy Francis, Queen. Can you, can you roll a stealth check for me? Okay. The whole time, I'm just like, what do you see, boy? What do you see? <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, I'm rolling them tonight, boys. Uh, stealth. Do I have any modifier? I do. That is a dirty 18. Hey, nice. cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, you guys, you guys are quietly able to kind of like make your way to the mouth of the cave, um, and you know you're stand, you're standing um, at the mouth of the cave now, um, and as you look out, um, you you notice uh, something kind of interesting because. Um, at first glance, you don't see any kind of path. Um, uh, but obviously, you know, you guys feel like you're kind of stuck in a situation. So as you take a closer look, um, you can see that um, there's, there's part of the snow path that appears as if um, it was at one time uh, kind of treaded upon, like there was a path there, but it had been recovered with snow as if to cover the tracks mm. okay. yeah i'm just gonna point there and look at francis <laughs> do you point with your nose do you point with your nose and stick your foot out oh my god <clears throat> what, are, what are you trying to say i i, I wish i spoke dog <laughs> just I'm gonna shake my head at him. Um, what is it? I'm going to cast invisibility on myself and continue <laughs> up the path. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say, follow my voice. <laughs> it's almost worse. I love it. Was that you, Spot? Um. So tell me about invisibility. Um, it does, does Francis not have the ability to see you whatsoever, regardless of role? What's the, um, yeah, it, I, I'm invisible for up to an hour. Excellent. Okay. So, um, <laughs> cool. You start to head up the, head up the path that was clearly kind of like covered up. Um, and, uh, you, you let out that call. Francis, can you please make a perception check? Yeah. I'll be oh, leaving my footprints streak as well. has ended. Uh, it's a four plus. 
Uh, sorry. Oh, it's nothing. So four. Cool. Okay. So here's what happens. Um, so Dragoose starts to go up the path, invisible. So it says, follow my voice in the way that he did. Um, <laughs> You uh, just kind of because of the storm um, and 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 the uh, and not being able to see him, and also just like your general uh, not feeling like he's competent in the least because he's an animal. Um, you're a little distracted, and actually felt like the voice came from inside the cave, um, and so he was actually you felt like he was leading you back in, into the cave. Um, Especially, you know, I mean, you didn't really know why you left the cave in the first place. So now he's leaving. He's leaving you back. I'm just walking back. This this is a bit of a pickle I'm in, but I guess I lost spot. Well, um, I guess I'll go back in this cave. It seemed like maybe his voice was coming from here. This is all him talking to himself. And he walks back into the cave. Hello? Spot? Uh, so you hear you hear from the dark recesses of the cave uh, this very low voice this is who was talking to whom so and and it's it's <laughs> such a it's such a deep grumble in a small place it, uh, like the the um, the vocalization almost like the shakes shakes part and you see like little like rocks fall from and dust fall from the ceiling of the cave spot i understood that did you learn how to speak i apologize you are mistaken okay Um, so you start to, uh, you start to, uh, <laughs> see a little bit of movement in the darkness. Uh, um, and, uh, this, uh, you see a figure, a very, very large figure, um, that was, uh, originally just kind of like sitting, um, up against the wall, you know, knees up, hands on knees, um, they're just going to look up and it, and it stands up very slowly um, but is hunched over just because of the size of the cave and it comes into the light and before you you just see this massive massive frost giant um, no, no, uh, that no. is just towering over you mm -hmm. um, and and it looks at you and says oh little one you don't look harmful. Uh, I've never done anything that would hurt someone phys physically. Roll a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> I got a three. Oh, God! <laughs> woof, woof. Uh... <laughs> Renamed yeah. the death, the death of Francis. Death of Francis. Um, <laughs> this, this massive frost giant. Um, does oh, not man. believe you. Um, in fact, uh, it, it it thought nice things about you, and you totally ruined it. And um, and he just looks at you and says. You have two seconds to leave my hiding place before my size 274 gets shoved up your tiny face. And he lifts up his foot. And you, and you notice one of his feet is way fucking bigger than the other one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I look at him like, that one That one must be the foot of all evil. <laughs> I knew he was real! I knew it! <laughs> fucking giant foot! <laughs> oh, man. Like, yeah. Giant foot. Uh, yeah, I mean, I run. I run for my life. 
Okay, cool. Um, make an athletics roll. Okay. um all right i just want to compound what i've done um i I want to try to run away and as i do i'm like and your foot looks weird and i rolled a a nat one (laughs) no man do we we drink for that is that a drink you literally everybody (laughs) (laughs) you literally think you just drink you might need to pour it out for just go like four three one (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Hey, math- um, mathematically, there's kind of a sequence there. It actually. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. Um, so, so here's what happens. Um, you, <laughs> you start to run away, and the moment you turn to run, you immediately, like on the turn, hit a rock and just fall flat on your face, uh, just immediately. Um, and you, you take. Uh, uh, two points of damage as you do that. <laughs> and he's um, in the and, poofy jacket, too. Yeah. So and you like, <laughs> Ralph. And you <laughs> I can't get out. No, people, oh. <laughs> um, but the, the thing is, as, as, you, as you fall flat on your face, um, like the rock rips a hole like in your pant in your snow jacket pant leg um and the force that you're falling uh with rips all the way up both legs and like into the the like torso part of your of your snowsuit oh. um and so your pants split and the and the the backs of your pant legs fly up and over your head <laughs> so now you you are you are face down in this cave uh you know in this mountain cave <laughs> my butt's out face down ass no out. so <laughs> you, 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 well it is you you are ass up you're face down ass up it, it is now right <laughs> in in the thing but the the uh, really the mad. giant looks at you and sees you're you're wearing a full diaper, <laughs> and you have be been safe. this whole time. It's it, it's something that you do because you're wearing the snowsuit for so long at any given moment that you have to do this. <laughs> it's not something that you share with anybody. Um, and the giant sees this massive diaper that's on you, and is like, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, I can't squish you. And he he uh, he bends down a little bit, and he picks you up just by the scruff of, oh. of your oh. little thing. And he he's like holding you in front of his face, and and with uh, being this close, you see that uh, he's quite hairy for a frost giant. Yeah. Um, and he's looking at you. And he's like, "Are you Italian?" <laughs> <laughs> no. How? <laughs> how did you get in my cave, little man? Um, this is like kind of a crazy story. Um, at first, you need to kind of forget about the diaper thing. Um, you. <laughs> They kind of they do make huggies for adults, but that's irrelevant. Also, I don't technically have to get the adult size. That's also irrelevant. Um, alternatively, <laughs> we kind of like like there's like a portal, um, and then bam, big bigfoot guy. Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, portal. What color was this portal? Uh, I really don't don't remember. Spot, do you rem- are you still here? Do you remember the color of the portal? Dre Goosh, please uh, roll a perception check. Eleven. Uh, that's good enough. Um, because because <laughs> the thing is, you, you were uh, you, you already like kind of noticed that Francis wasn't following you. Yeah. Um, and you you hate him. Um, 
but you were chilling there. Trigush isn't a bad guy. Yeah, he's kind of, you know, you know, is a child that you're just trying to avoid. You and you hear this happening, and you, uh, so you, you, you're still invisible, but you pop around the corner, um, and y- you see this giant, uh, hairy frost giant holding uh, Francis by the scruff. Um, the 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 pants of of his snowsuit are just completely tattered. You see a soiled diaper um, on Francis. Um, and yeah, you can respond to the question however, however you do. Um, okay, so like, how far away do you think I am, feet wise? Um, you're you're probably you're about twenty feet away. Okay, I would like to. So, I have a tiny construct as an artificer, my little dragonfly that sits on my head. And I'm going to fly it over to Francis. And it has this move called Channel Magic where I can, if it's within 120 feet of me, I can use a spell that has a range of touch. And I'm going to cast Invisibility on Francis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, sweet. So... So that happens. You hear you hear Francis say, uh, you know, what color was the portal? And you you have his thing come up, and now the giant is looking at it. Um, uh, he's still holding. I, I'm suspecting he still feels he yeah, feels a Francis like in his hands. Scruff, like this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He had you like that. Okay. Um... And so and so he's and, and so uh, real quick, the giant uh, sees Francis go invisible, and. <laughs> And the giant's like, a magic user. I want to cut it. Um, I will give you, I will give you, a, a reaction here, Francis. Yeah. I'll, um, actually, I don't think I have a knife. Um, yeah, you do. Do I have a knife? I thought it was just like a slingshot and a yeah, quarter staff. Uh, uh, you've got. I, I added the knife because you had me skin the owl bear yesterday, and I couldn't do it without okay. some sort of little thing. Um, so I want to take I the just, knife. I just start peed adding a dagger. So if you want a little dagger, I want to take the knife and I, I start to like go to like cut like his finger, and it like occurs to me, and I look at him, and I'm like, he's a dick. And I'm like, fuck his finger, and I throw it at his eyeball. All right. <laughs> um. I would like you to make an attack roll with disadvantage because you're very close to him. Oh, it doesn't get much better than that. I rolled two sixes. So <laughs> the, the positive side of that is that it didn't get worse. <laughs> okay. So it's an um, eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so what happens is uh, you try to throw this dagger at his face um, and that and uh, as you as you wind up the thing is you're you're not like in a very like easily mobile position right you have a snowsuit on which has relatively limited movement already and you're being hung by the scruff so like your arms are straight out and you have the knife and you try to do that like but you let go too soon and it just falls behind you um, and Dre Goosh um, so what happens is it, it, it falls behind you and it hits a rock um, and starts flying co- towards Dre Goosh. Um, oh. And here's what's going to happen. Sweet. Um, Dre Goosh, you see this dagger flying at you because the moment he lets go of it, I suspect it's no longer invisible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, so he lets go of it. Drag, a dagger falls on the rock, starts flying at you, and you just like step out of the way, um, and that's what you see happen. Yeah. Um, cool. So uh, the frost giant is looking. I don't like magic users. Magic users have been stealing my. I don't know um, who you're talking he... to because I'm not here. 
Uh, roll deception for me. Oh, this is gonna go well. <laughs> good response. That's good response. <laughs> oh, I, I like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. I got a dirty 20. Yeah, that's still not good enough at this uh... point. Um, and so... <laughs> <laughs> You're not fooling anyone, little man. And he wraps his hand, his hand around your whole body and uh, uh, starts to, like, stomp his way out toward the opening of the cave. Um, oh. And he, so, so he's, he's near you, Dragoosh. Um, and, yeah, he's coming towards the front okay. of the cave. I want to yell, Are you talking about the cultists? <laughs> Who said that? I I won't reveal myself yet. Mm. Well then, speak quickly, or this yeah. little tiny fly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes I do. That's crazy. <laughs> Butterfish, tiny <laughs> magic. <laughs> Uh, Fuck him like, up, Drago. Speak, speak quick, speak quickly, or this tiny takes a little bit of a trip. Um, <laughs> the uh, the closest half elf, orc. They have other orc. They have the their insignia that I don't remember. <laughs> How, how describes do you the know yeah. this? We, I was captured by them, and this little man freed me. He doesn't seem like the type that would do that. He's he is dumb but kind. <laughs> 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 and so, and the the fr the giant looks at his hand. Like, uh, I'll break concentration on the spell for both of us. Oh. <laughs> okay. You look at he's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was well. here the whole time. <laughs> You're right about him being dumb. I suppose <laughs> an enemy of an enemy is a friend. A friend of me. <laughs> you guys are really close voices. enough. Um, and uh, the frost giant switches hands that uh, Francis is in and reaches his uh, his. Uh, finger his index finger out to shake Dragoosh's hand. Says, "I am Giant Foot. It's a pleasure to meet you. You are real. <laughs> For three hundred and eighty-one years, I have heard of you. <laughs> mm. I have resided in these mountains for much longer than that." But lately, me and my kin have been under attack. Many cultists are amassing all over this mountain with much magical activity happening at its peak. Can, can you help us get there? Hmm. Oh. And we will try to stop them for you, oh, oh, my good oh. friend. Oh, 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 oh. You see, I oh. have tricks. <laughs> you sure do. I can't believe but, you speak uh, dogs. If it's only and as as he says that, <laughs> um, he puts he puts uh, Francis behind his back and like further away. <laughs> It's going to take a lot more than one frost giant and two little tinies to take down the cultists and that which they are summoning. I, 
My friends are already on their way there. We oh. got lost. Oh. Oh, well, if there's more of you, then we Plenty. might have a chance. Plenty more. Excellent. Well, everyone, climb on. <laughs> and, he, and he reaches down, or he, like, bends over so that you guys can climb on the backs of uh, this giant uh, giant foot. Um, oh, yeah. It's like the tree ants. Oh, that's exactly what I was thinking <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. He, he says, even though they're talking in every step. Yeah. I feel like one um, step's bigger than the other, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit. Uh, a little so do, you guys, do you guys climb on the back? This is literally... I did this. That it's literally and it's literally two people, like two. I know. The hobbits. Yeah. yeah, that's fun. Cool. Um, going to sweet. Do you guys? Yeah. Do you guys? We're <laughs> tricks. <laughs> yeah, I climb on. Sweet, uh, Francis. You don't have a choice. Um, he he actually keeps you in his fist <laughs> because he does not trust your shit. Um, so Draguth, you climb on the back, and uh, uh, giant foot crawls out of his little like cave. And starts stomping very quickly up the mountain. I mean, I mean, uh, one step is definitely much larger than the other, but you guys are booking <laughs> it up, up the mountain. Um, and we're going to switch perspectives. Woo! So um, this red portal, uh, similarly, uh, it's for, opens up real fast. And uh, Voca Verde, Jarvis, Nameless Sentient Stone, and Madden, you guys fall out of this portal. Um, onto uh, onto the icy ground, and um, you guys are kind of piling on on uh, one on top of the other. As you look around, you can see that um, you are so high up that um, it's it's a little it's a the the air is is it's a little bit tough to breathe. Just just a little bit. You can feel a difference in in in, uh, in your breathing. As you look down, you're so high up that the storm is literally below you. You you have risen to a point that's that's above this uh, kind of blizzardy snowstorm that has happened. Um, you're not quite like at the pinnacle, but you are about as high up as you could be. Um, th there's there's still a ways that you can go. Tarnation, whoo! You know, I used to think that they faked the first interplanar landing, but with technology like that, I, it's entirely possible. Wow. Look at that view. Um, I wanted to amazing. mention to everyone, uh, so the, the mountain symbol that we saw, when we were back in the first room, uh, I happened to read a book that uh, it, it mentioned the word erupt, and That's I could only true. deduce that it had to do with I don't know with this mountain that we're on erupting if if Barathor comes comes to life. You know that makes Yeah, you know, if that, no, like, if we don't we don't succeed then the mountain maybe erupts with with fire lord from within. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. You know, I got this theory that the Queen of Farkles is really the one that's behind the uh, the dragon towers that were that fell down way back, way back in the day. And you know, like I said, you know, I, it's entirely possible that she uses the same type of technology to 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 to, to uh, you know drop those towers and blame the dragons on. Uh, Stone, do you know anything about about the mountain erupting and Barathor coming to life and? You're muted. <laughs> oh, you're muted, Matt. You're still He's muted. Not muted. You're not muted on Zoom. You're muted on something. You might be muted on your mic. <laughs> Look at this guy talking to inanimate objects. <laughs> 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 How about now? You're good. Uh, there, you there, there you are. There you are. There you are. There's a button. And... There's a button. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I was I hope you guys you... gold. I was gonna say, I hope you didn't say anything super funny, because uh, like I think that whole bit when you'd have bits, I was like, nah, you're, uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, so I, I'll I will float up out of uh, Madden's pocket and I will say, uh, well, a uh, 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 erupting from a volcano from wherever he slumbers is certainly uh, the modus operandi, Barathor the Fire Lord. So I would not I would not be surprised if that was a method by which he returned to this plane. 
Is this the mountain that they're speaking of? It could very well be. I don't know that I would know that for sure. Would I know that? Um, uh, roll, roll a history check for me real fast. We'll do this. on the big guy. Let's go. Let's get a lit up 20. Let's go. Wow. That was only an 18. Oh, <laughs> man. Doesn't line up for an 18. Sorry to say. But, so, uh, um, yeah, a lot. So like 20-something. The thing is, like, uh... Oh, you said, well, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. 18 is plenty. Um, yeah. So your, your knowledge of Barathor really, uh, doesn't lead you to the answer to that question. But what does lead you to the answer to that question is the fact that everything, uh, that you, that you recognized in the cabin with, with the, uh, the mountain, uh, uh, painting that you remember briefly noticing, uh, with the mountain symbol and the fact that you're on the mountain and that's where these cultists are is like, yeah, Barathor is going to get summoned on this mountain and that shit's going to happen. Right. <clears throat> yeah. I, I would deduce that that would be the method by which, uh, Barathor makes his, makes his grand entrance, uh, dramatic as he may be with the fire and whatnot. So it, it is a fair bet to say that this very mountain uh, is, a, is a veritable ground zero for that very event to occur. Eat our own noses this whole time. <laughs> Are you talking science. to your snake right now? I, I, I'm not sure what that was. I'm just, no, <laughs> hey, look, you know, I'm just saying, you know, Stony, since I met you, you're the only one that's really taking anything I've said seriously. And you speak like a smarty type person, like myself, as I am, and such for for worth not. And, uh, you know, I just appreciate you. That's all. Well, all right, then. Uh, (laughs) Is it possible for a floating head to be like... (laughs) Sure. (laughs) I do that with my mage hand while he looks away. (laughs) Of course, yes, I appreciate that. I'm not with this guy. We're not anything like... <laughs> just, I'm just, um, I'm just grateful that you believe in me. That's all. <laughs> uh, Madden and Voka, you, you totally noticed the the movement of the rock in midair. Like, uh, yeah, I'm not this guy. Um, so we find um, ourselves in an advantageous so position. Down... What do you mean? Well, if this is where he plans on making his grand entrance, we are here to. Uh, Stop it, subvert it, take notes. Well, you know, do we, real- do we see any sign of Buddy? Did Buddy come through here? Oh, that's a great question. Or, or, or uh, are answer. you asking, uh, are you asking as Voca or as Chad? I'm asking you. Okay, uh, <laughs> roll, uh, <laughs> uh, roll a perception check, please. Five. Five. <laughs> um, so. So you're you're like you're like looking around at the snow, like trying like hmm, like we're in the snow. Shit leaves tracks, um, and you're like, oh man, there they are! I found them. And then you started to follow the tracks, uh, but you realized they were your own tracks as you guys were just like talking. And so you just I'm on, come on, come on. Never mind. Oh, furthermore, all of you uh, organics, you meat bags, all look more or less the same to me. I don't mean that in any sort of uh, <laughs> racist or, or sort of way, but get used to being in a stone. And I, I do believe there was a few more of us. Uh, well, I, mean, I mean, now that the donkey ain't more. here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. God. Uh, I'm going to reach out telepathically and see if uh, Dragush and uh, Francis are. I mean, what is it like? Thirty feet, sixty feet? Like, are they anywhere close? Uh, I would say. Well, uh, go ahead and roll a perception roll. Okay. Well, I'm I'm trying to communicate with them telepathically. So if they don't respond, I assume they're out of range. I mean, I'm, I can perception I'm, if you want, but but it's I'll do. Yeah, I'm I'm just. Uh, I mean, I want to tie a roll to it in general, sure. but yeah. like I'm I, I'm using it as like as like a telepathic kind of Google search. Like, sure. or, or like radio, like, does anyone pick up my radio signal type thing? Ooh, that's another 18. What in the sonar. world is up? Excellent. Out of boy. Uh, so, so kind of like you're using your, your telepathy, uh, like calm to try to, to try to, uh, you know, survey 
the surrounding area in an attempt to find Dragoosh and uh, and Francis. Um, <laughs> you you feel a little something from them, but the thing is, like, um, you have a you have a decent range on this. And and all you can really decipher is the direction. Um, so so you feel a little bit of uh, kind of uh, mental energy coming from uh, you know further down the mountain, um, but you do kind of like pick up uh, some some like mental calms of uh, uh, of about f- uh, f- four or five individuals, uh, approximately about uh, fifty to seventy five feet further up the mountain well i have depending upon your opinion of these two individuals i have good news and i have bad news the good news is i'm reasonably sure our missing party members yet live the bad news is there are four or five uh persons uh much closer than that wherever wherever our fallen foes our friends are and i do not know of their intention nice do you know where the uh, the the four or five are coming from? And did they feel like they were intent on infringing our freedoms? <laughs> I'm afraid I, I was not able to get that deep a, a, a an impression. Do I have a general sense of direction or just nearby? Uh, on on the four or five individuals, you yeah. know, I mean, uh, you know, it's further up, and and being that you're at the pe- uh, near kind of the peak. Um, it doesn't matter which direction you go. If you go up, you will reach the same destination. Uh, at the end of our journey, as close as we may be, I believe they are further up, up above uh, than we are. And my hypothesis is that has something to do with the ritual to raise the Fire Lord. It's my, I do not know that they know that we are here, however. I think we, I think we should keep it that way, don't you? Well, I do indeed. Sorry, excuse me. These these unknown this unknown quantity, uh, it came from the Fire Lord's direction. Is that what you just said? I cannot imagine any other living creature would be up as far as we are without having something to do with with the summoning. <clears throat> so that is that is my hypothesis. You, you you talk real smart, and I like that. Well, I suppose it takes one to know one. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> Cool. Uh, what you guys doing? I'm trying to figure out. You know, we are at a great advantage, knowing you know what's about to go on. But I'm trying to figure out, like, who, who's behind it? Are we? Are you, you know what I mean? Are we talking about Queen Wa from Brevin, or uh, or the the Queen of Farkle, perhaps? Uh, I think that's really, uh, uh, really kind of what I what I'm what I'm trying to figure out uh, in between myself, this snake skin, and this twig. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Fire Lord. That's too easy. I mean, that's what they would want you to think, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I- 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 excuse me, friend. Uh, I-, I understand. I understand your fears. Um, but I also feel like we need to stop the fu- stop Barathor from coming, and then we can figure out who's who's doing it. I think step. I think step one should be to stop it. You know, I, I, you know, I usually don't listen to women, but I think you're right. I think you are correct. And I and mean then, that uh, in a good way. I mean that in a good and way. Then, <laughs> and the second she hears that, uh, she just wants to like, <laughs> and then she's going to start to ascend the mountain. <laughs> Sweet. I'm What's everybody follow. else doing? I, I suggest we, we do so uh, covertly so as to not... Uh, destroy our absolute advantage of surprise. Cool. Yeah. So I like um, what you're saying, yeah. So you guys are all ascending the uh, the the to the peak of Mount um, I forget the name of Wester. it at this point. Uh, Wester, thank you. There we go. Uh, you ascend to the peak of Mount Wester. Um, I would like you all to roll stealth checks. Is this like the highest mountain in the Western Expanse? Is that why it's yes? Like, is this like oh okay? Did you say perception? Uh, stealth. Well, either way, <laughs> <laughs> not good. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, rolled, I, I got a nineteen. S- I also have a nineteen. 
I actually oh, listen to doubles. Mm, doubles. Yeah. Doubles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Doubles. Hold on. I'm getting. I rolled a. I rolled a six. Cool. So, probably not. Oh. Good. In every life, little rain must fall. I rolled a two. Okie oh. dokie. Um, so, so here's here's kind of Plus what's happening. Plus one, baby. So, we got one. three. Yeah, dude. Oh. Yeah, dude. I okay. got three. So. <laughs> All right. Um, so Boca Verde and <laughs> Madden, you guys are heading up, <laughs> heading up the mountain, um, and and you're actually making a little bit better pace than Nameless Sentient Stone as well as Jarvis. Um, you reach the top uh, of of uh, Mount Wester. And you peek over the uh, the, the like snowbank there, um, well, you know, well before um, the other two get there, you see uh, you see f- five cultists um, that are on kind of a multi. It's like an island. It's like a rock island in the center uh, of this molten circle. Um, that is that is uh, it's kind of a, a molten moat. Uh, of lava that is surrounding them, um, and uh, and as you look at it, you can kind of tell that this molten mo- uh, moat uh, vaguely resembles uh, the the symbol uh, that's on the demonic belts and, and on the tapestry and all that. Everything kind of matches. Um, you see, uh, you see in the center um, of of this island um, where these five cultists are. In the very center of it is is Buddy, um, the cultist, and. Um, he is holding all of the ice giant hearts in his hand as four other cultists are gathered around him. Um, and you guys, uh, you guys get up to the top and you're looking at it um, just as Buddy says, Everyone, we are all super excited to give our lives for Barathor and his destructive coming uh, back to the land of Magna. Um, and you guys hear this just as uh, as Jarvis and Nameless Sentient Stone are also um, coming up uh, to the snowbank. You guys are having a discussion about uh, Jarvis's latest conspiracy theory, which sounds a little bit like... Well, uh, I mean, as I was saying before, dragon, dragon breath just doesn't melt. Uh, concrete <laughs> stone beams, you know. So I it, it just makes sense to me. I don't understand why it doesn't make sense to you. That's no, as, as I have explained a hundred times, it's not a matter of the dragon's breath temperature, sir. It's it's a matter of infrastructure. The way the the towers were built, you see. You know that and, they're and quite... as, as they're having this conversation, not even paying attention to where they're coming, uh, to where they're going, um, like. Uh, Jarvis, you trip over Madden's feet because Madden's kind of like laid down prone watching what's happening. You trip and, and you and your hands fly up and smack like a uh, nameless sentient stone out of the air. You both fall forward, screaming on your way down. I'm and as you're screaming, for on you. <laughs> <laughs> all of the, all of the cult- cultists turn their gaze to you, and Buddy, the halfling cultist in the center, is like. Everyone, we have an audience. Um, and he hands out the ice giant uh, hearts to all the cultists at the same time as as they all uh, make eye contact with you and they all consume the ice giant hearts at the same time, uh, getting oh, just shit. violet blood all over the, the, their faces. Oh. And uh, they say, enjoy the show as they consume and what happens is uh as as each cultist fully uh you know uh eats the eats the heart um you can you can see their bodies like start to start to almost like convulse um in different ways uh, almost like there's there's there are small explosions happening inside and and the body's kind of like trying to keep it in um, and then simultaneously, all of them just like burst into uh, into this gory, you know, uh, uh, spectacle of explosion. Um, all of their uh, their cultist parts fall into the uh, molten 
uh, symbol that's that's surrounding them. And as their parts uh, fall fall into this molten, it begins to illuminate very, very, very brightly with this uh, with this violet hue. Um, and the whole ground starts to shake. Um, and uh, the, the, the shaking, you know, uh, continues for a brief moment until this demonic fist just like bursts out of the center little platform that, that the cultists were standing on. Um, and Barathor <laughs> uh, Barathor uh, crawls out of the mountain and uh, like places his hands uh, on on uh, you know on the shit and he lets out this this massive roar at everything just roar! and uh, and as he roars you know fire bellows uh, you know from his mouth uh, not a far enough distance to actually cause some but scary as fuck um, and the ground shakes and um, the uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> he 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 yeah. looks at all of you, um, uh, uh, no, noticing your presence, and he says, "Your world will erupt in demonic flames." Um, and he he leaps up into the air um, and uh, down the backside of the mountain, um, out of your guys' sight. It's right about this time that an ice giant comes up the side um, <laughs> carrying Francis and Dragoosh. Uh, the ice giant looks at the peak. Oh no, we're too late. And he looks over at, at the other two and, uh, or, or he looks over at the four of you and is like, There are only four more of you guys? Well, that has plenty more. Well, unless, and maybe this is the apogee of foolishness to ask, I don't suppose anybody got the pager number of that crustacean-armed fellow, because he'd make one more, possibly two. What are you worried about? We got, <laughs> you're the giant foot. <laughs> we got the giant foot on <laughs> our side. What are you guys freaking out about? I'm not freaking out. You're freaking out. <laughs> but my my reputation precedes me. I've been tracking you for, well, not 381 years or anything like that, but I've been tracking you for quite some time. Um, I'm a, I'm a little weirded out by that. <laughs> big fan, just big fan. Not as big as your giant foot, but but big, big fan, big fan. He looks down at his foot. He's like, um. You know, typically you don't call that out. You know, whenever you meet someone and you and you notice something different about their appearance. Sure, man, I hear you. You do you. I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do. Okay. Well, there's there's one thing that all of us must do, and that is defeat well, that guy you saw. Yeah, fuck that guy. And that's the end of the session. <laughs> that's a problem for tomorrow night's cast. Have fun, yeah. jerks. Exactly. You guys are F. <laughs> oh, man. I am so sorry, Taylor, to whatever I did to your character. Uh, it's, it's now what it is, you know? No, it's fun. Yeah. Well, you ripped your snowsuit. Now his butt's out. <laughs> Face yeah, down maybe the hand up, really man. kept you warm, but uh, we're, we're going to have a big old reveal uh, tomorrow. Um, but thank you so much to all the viewers. Um, a big thank you to our special guests. I'm talking about Chad Showhead, Andrew yeah. Palacio, and Matthew Melton. You guys, you're absolutely amazing. Come on. Um, track these guys down on Instagram um, because they all are amazing artists that are doing super, super cool things. Um, and because that's, that's kind of our brand here at the Bottle Cat Brigade. Uh, we all do cool shit. Um, but again, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, tune in tomorrow night for the conclusion of the Zenith 
uh, frost feather, where we'll find out how this shit goes down. Um, buy all of your dice from DiceEnvy.com slash Brigade. Check us out on Patreon, on Instagram, and all the social medias. Become part of our friendship community, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Join our yeah. OnlyFans. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.